because this was shocking. <laughs> Let's have a look at this. This is some of the worst Orn play I've ever seen. What are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> it looks so clunky, dude. We'll get this to it back to even gold. So we still haven't really talked about uh, a lot about the. I'm, I. Yeah. <laughs> this is the worst Zix performance I've ever seen. Look at this brilliant motherfucker. Look at his majesty. Look at that proud face. Look at that great plumage right here. Color coordination, great. Eye contact, perfect. He projects from the chest. Big chest puffed out. Very confident bird. That is a magnificent animal. These guys fucking putting in the work, man. This is how you get places. A lot of respect to these guys, man. They are fucking unofficial VCS English. They are working hard. They are casting long at games. They are trying to get some work out there. Boys, let's, let's show them some love. Good fucking job, gentlemen. Keep it up. Situation, a really good knockout. Should be able to get the return kill. CBL, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're just eating. Oh! 32 souls at 20 minutes here for Big Coro. Not, not great. Is what it? is going on? <laughs> Um, what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Very good bot game in the last one, so maybe now it's time for a very good thresh game for him. So I think bot lane for Gun should be the one we, we all look at because in the first three games, big advantage. We've now arrived, ladies and gentlemen, 86 days into the split. We have gotten to our grand finals of the VCS, where the winner of this series will now be taking the spots to go to MSI, the first international event that VCS will be attending over the course of, uh, I mean, ever since the 2019. It's been a very long time, and I'm, I'm more than excited to see who is going to end up claiming it, whether it's the team of rookies that has surprised everybody for the entire split, or perhaps the favorites of everybody here with Gam being able to take that one, or Saigon as as well myself i'm rebel fox i'm gonna be your desk host once again after yesterday's fantastic third place match joining me a handful of new names i'll give introductions one at a time this evening uh first of course our analyst on the evening is crincy crincy how you doing i'm doing well and uh yeah what a bit spontaneous to be called up to the finals here and i hope i do the series justice because we have a bang on our hands I think a banger is a pretty big understatement, but I, I'm absolutely willing to call it that just because of how amazing that I'm sure that this is going to be. And on the other side of him, a very special guest we have on the day today, a coach of BTS, a team here in the VCS as well, Mr. Hanke. Hanke, how you doing? Welcome to the desk. Oh, thank you for inviting me here. I'm doing well. I cannot wait for the final. I think there's more, more fight and tower dive or something in this game. And I cannot wait to see it. <laughs> I couldn't be possibly more in your boat to be able to say that. Uh, I would love to see some tower dives. I'm sure every day would love some of that as well. As we'll get to see the casters a little bit later on. First, let's let's take a little bit of a broader scope. As is coming into the end of our split, we have some voting on some awards, especially from our community that we're going to get a chance to take a look at. And I think some of the names that are on this list are not going to be shocking in the slightest across all things. I think first off, uh, well, let's just take a look at our first all team all pro set of teams where we've got uh, the majority of the top side here. Uh, 
unsurprisingly, from GAM, where you've got Kiaya, Levi, Kadi, and then Artemis and Taki as well. I'll grab both of your opinions. Hanke, let's start with you, because I know there's at least one player that you like to talk about to start with a little bit later on. Uh, but what are your thoughts on this first team all pro voting here from our community? So I think um, the top side of the team is actually good. The the Levi doing a really good thing about the corner and doing stuff and prepare for the team to do a mm -hmm. control the object. And in the bottom side, I think Taki is the best is the best of the support right now in the split. But uh, at the some time he's he's choking and tilt. I think um yeah it's better for um, style 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 will be the the better in the AD carry, but uh. For, for them, for people out here, it's good. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Community did a good job. And uh, like you said, perhaps Artemis style will be a competition to see. We'll see if style can show up in the finals, make a little bit of difference. Next up, uh, I'll, we'll bring it, I guess, to rookie of the split, which is going to be a really important vote because there is a team of basically all rookies that we've been kind of contemplating over the entirety of the split. And the winner of that one will pop up on the screen. And it happens to have been Bean J. Crincy, your take on this, obviously, pretty much the only competition in the entire split was Saigon Buffalo's entire roster. So, Bean J. grabbing this one, what do you make of that? I mean, that's yeah. uh, kind of uh, a challenge for uh, Bean J. today because uh, Levi is like maybe the most prestiged uh, player ever from the VCS, and he's facing Bean J. today. And uh, Gam, uh, I mean, while not having won the finals last year, they Surely looked like the best team coming into today. And Bin Jay today, he has to prove that he has earned uh, his uh, namesake here and has uh, deservedly gotten the title of Rookie of the Split. Hanke, did you have something to add to that? I wasn't sure. I think uh, Bin Jay have really good mental to play the first time in the VCS and the Rookie of the Split is, is the right thing to uh, give him. Okay. Fantastic to hear. Uh, like I said, it was kind of tough to choose between the three rookies on the side of Saigon. We'll also get a chance to see the look at the most improved player, which is one I think that you had already mentioned before. And that's going to actually be the ADC on the side of GAM, which is style. I think there's a lot of people that could have maybe looked at this vote and potentially been within that voting. Uh, you know, you think you're like Froggy from the side of SGB, who had a not great start far starting split, but looked really good this split. Perhaps the only person in the entire world who would vote for Drakthar is myself. But now I've got his own coach on our desk so maybe i can get your opinions on that but your thoughts on style getting most improved player over somebody like froggy or, or other players do you really believe that style's taking this next step forward to become maybe the best adc in the split yeah because uh he uh he can play like a losing land or a winning land mm -hmm. anything if the team want him to play he can play good at Senna or even like play kaisa and carry for the late game and he do a really good job in the landing phase with a with a better CS performance than the the, the others. So I think style is more better than he was be before in Saigon Buffalo. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit chalker in the late game before hit now. So now he play a a little bit calm down and just focus more in the team fight and do nothing risky. So he improved a lot. I think it's Glad a bit you. misleading there uh, because uh, at first you might think that style is uh, yeah in an easy spot because he's on gum, but they constantly putting him on weak side. And last year we saw the difference like th that they had easy love and that looked like a clear weakness for gum. And with style, that's a, a bit less the case. So I would say uh, like calling him the most improved player is fair to say. Definitely, uh, I think coming into the split, the thought that style was going to be taking over for easy love in that ABC position wasn't something everyone was accepting of. Uh, but I don't think there's many doubters at this point as to who they should be starting over top of the other ones. So let's jump into, I guess, I suppose what would be considered our matchup of the week, where we're going to consider both Kiaya and Hazmed uh, between those two players on the top side of the map. Kiaya, of course, being an exceptional player, he's been great for years, everything of that sort. But Hazmed also, in their last matchup, was really, really solid in this, was dominating the laning phase, and this is perhaps the most exciting matchup, is these two are, are just about as close as you could possibly get when it comes to every single like uh, comparison you could possibly make. So when you're looking at these two, we'll start with Krinzi. Uh, what are your thoughts between Hosmed, Kiaya, how this lane is going to go, and what these teams need to do to try to get their top laner succeeding? 
I mean, in general, you would slightly favor Kiaya there because he, yeah, he has been the best top laner last year and uh, also looked like this this year. And Gamma is like one of the greatest regular splits ever. But we always say that about them. But the thing that with uh, Kiaya is, yeah, his most feared champion is his Na, I would say. He played seven games of it, won six out of them. And the thing with, uh, is, uh, Coated last series, for example, he only played carries, but not one of them was countering Na directly. But yeah, Hamlet kind of does that. And uh, he plays Irelia, he plays Camille. He, He's also a lot bit more flexible player than Coated is, and also more individually skilled, I would say. So this is a banger to watch this time because uh, last series also he made uh, Kiaya look like the worst top lane of the series. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. And your your thoughts on that, Hanke, as well? Where Hasmed comes into this one having had a really good performance in their previous best of three, is there something that Saigon can do to try to get their top laner rolling inside of the series up against what is? Uh, I mean, he was voted literally the best top laner in the split. Yeah, I think uh, Saigon coach will give the uh, Hasmed more advantage on land. He will pick. Uh, Winning lane for Hasmid and try to play top side tower dive or mm -hmm. prepare for the Herald when this come and ready to fight in the bottom lane. If a Hasmid have advantage on land, so he will be able to TP to TB into the bot side and have the people in the bot to doing the fight or control the object. So Kiya have re really good knowledge about the landing phase and he very hard to lose any land match up with the others. But uh, Hasmet is really good at um, solo skill, something yeah, he killed Yeros with man versus Gunnar. <laughs> and that's why uh, I think um, Ren, Cost of Saigon, will give the Hasmet chance to win the lane with the winning matchup. Would love to see it. A couple of winning matchup top laners would actually be really entertaining to watch between the two of them. But uh, that that's a story that time will eventually tell for us. So then coming into the more specifics of the game, I know you had mentioned before we had started on anything into Taki, who, uh, again, he was my rookie of the split. I thought Taki was incredible uh, coming out, maybe arguably, if not just definitively, the best support that we've seen inside of the VCS for the majority of the split. Uh, he's been a playmaker, especially within playoffs and being one of the best, uh, most rock solid pieces of this rookie lineup as they came into the split. But you think also they came in through that promotion tournament, right? They lost to GLX in the promotion tournament to try to get in. The development this, of this team and these rookies has been crazy. So talk to me about how Taki could be this difference maker for the side of Saigon. Because at the moment, uh, I, I don't know what our predictions are quite yet. We'll get to those right after this point, I suppose. But we'll get a chance to, to take a look at those. So tell me how it is that Taki maybe could be the difference maker here for Saigon competing up against Gam. Yeah, I think because Taki now is more stronger when he's doing the, his, his job about shotgun and moving around the map, it's better to play the champion that have advantage on the side, on the bot side, and then allow him to go drumming to top side or middle and play control the object. When the dragon come or herald, he, he's drumming faster than the enemy support. And that's why Taki is now improved a lot when the, the promotion now. Yeah. Glad to hear it. Uh, Crincy, your thoughts? I mean, Taki, obviously amazing split. The rest of these rookies developed a long way since they were able to play up against uh, GLX inside of that promotion series. Your thoughts on what his role in making sure that Saigon Buffalo has a, uh, a prevalence today or the ability to actually take the series today? I mean, uh, what I think is the biggest difference between Taki and B is that uh, he plays a lot less Leona and more to the Galio side, uh, which is, of course, somewhat caused because uh, B gets it taken away by his own mid laner. And uh, he uses picks like his Galio and as well to uh, enable his juggler more and then take over the map that way. And uh, B is a little bit more lane fox, I would say, but Taki knows how to control the map. Yeah. I've always called Taki a little bit more of a counter-engaged support than an engaged support. You can see some of the numbers, things like Alistar, Leona, not super on, but uh, Rel and Thresh and all these other champions, fantastic. So we'll see if B is going to be able to make that difference for the remainder of his team. Before anything else, let's actually jump into predictions really quickly because I'd like to see what you two have actually come about. And I know this is likely going to be a split desk and our casters are probably going to have some different opinions as well. So we'll get a chance to look at exactly what everybody is predicting at the moment. Ah, I see I have been outnumbered yet again where it is 3-1 <laughs> for Quincy for Gam and 3-2 for Hanke the expectation of a longer series because I mean some people out there I'm sure are guessing the 3-0 for Gam uh, so we'll start with you Quincy what about Gam has got you in such a mindset that they're going to come out with this definitive of a 3-1 win 
I mean, I was on the desk for Garm versus Team Secret, and yeah, they didn't have to show basically anything versus Team Secret, despite losing their only series to them in the regular split. And uh, that that convinces me as Garm as, as a favorite. I would say, though, Cycle Buffalo, the, the Wookiee team, so to say, their name is known, but the, their players changed over the course of time. They are able to challenge Garm, they are able to take a game from them, but not more than that. All right, and, and you, Hanke, where you predict this to be a full five-game series between these two teams, what about these teams do you believe that will actually end up take it all the way, whether it is going to be GAM or the opposition, uh, opposition because obviously I predicted the other side. So what is ha- what has you GAM winning that kind of 50-50 last final game in the longer best of five? What's going to cause that series to go this long? Yeah, I think I choose 3-2 for GAM because I... that. Saigon will bring out a very weird champion for maybe jungle or middle and support to play and counter the game marines game uh, can can win the, the series but it's very hard for them to go because um the the plan or the tactic from Saigon will change every time and improve a lot so maybe we champion with tactic like uh, invade in the first time or swap lane or something it will happen in the final and it make camp will be more more difficult to win in the series. Yeah, I, I actually have to throw that to you as well. I think that's a really good point. Only because uh, perhaps one difference maker we don't talk about all too often is coaches. And Ren is is obviously very coach good coach. I know that's probably something you have a lot more experience with. Our casters predictions also on the screen. Mobby has zero faith in the boys from Saigon every day with the three one. You'll weigh with the three two. Predicting. I know that's more of a points thing between those two than anything else. So that's 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 the funny part of all of this. So I am the only person, the only representative on the desk that's uh, or in this entire broadcast that's actually rooting for Saigon Buffalo because I want to see Froggy get MSI. That's my personal opinion among all other things. Uh, So gentlemen, it looks like we're going to be starting up into the draft sooner rather than later. So I'm going to hurry this along. Uh, What kind of expectations do you suppose we have in terms of tactics? Like like you said, Hanke, perhaps some some fun when it comes to invading or things of that sort. Do you know of a game plan? Would your team practiced against a game plan? Do you think that's particularly lethal for the side of Saigon as opposed to Gam that could put Gam in their place to start this series? Yeah, I think uh, if Saigon have the better draft in the oh. early, like uh, some strong laner and some mm-hmm. strong jungle, they will decide to play the uh, invade to the jungle of Levi and remove uh, him advantage of the the jungle, and then uh, slowly scale the land with the jungle inside. By the way, when he, they are uh, successful in the invade, yeah, so that's why uh, I believe in that. Gotcha. I'm so sorry, Crincy. I-, I forgot that our most important and most vital analyst in the entire world, Rakan, has gotten uh, pretty much 100% win rate the entire split. Was not made into a PT yesterday because of an incorrect prediction. Uh, <laughs> so we're actually going to get a chance to see what it is that the Rakan, the bird, decided to pick for the series today. Hello, everybody watching BTS English. As we know, it's been a long split. It's been a hard split. And our analyst, well... They're not that good at their job. So instead, we've got someone out of prison. It's Rakan to tell you who's going to win from SGB or Garm. What's it going to be, Rakan? We'll put him down in the middle. What are you thinking, mate? Oh, he's moved over to Garm. There it is. He reckons it's going to be the favourites taking it. Garm will be your Spring Split 2021 Summer cha- uh, Wow, Spring Champion. And if not, Rakan, well... Marby, <laughs> you know what will happen. Thank you, Rakan, for your wonderful insights and, and making me, of course, the only person in the entire uh, broadcast crew. Also, predicting against the bird is not something that I'm going to be happy about, so unfortunately, that's uh, my burden to bear. We'll now come back to you, Crincy, as we, we got some fantastic uh, points from the side of Handcase. So tell me about Gam and what Gam can do so, to solidify this series, being perhaps the favorites, the veterans, everything that they've got going for themselves. What is it that could, uh, Gam could do could definitely kind of uh, hammer down the fact that they could take this series or that they should take this series? Series. Uh, I mean, I gladly take a back seat and uh, take over for the bird there. I mean, he, he deserves his time on the desk. But anyway, back to Garm. Uh, I think they have to ban Seraphine because they don't play it themselves. And Froggy has shown to play it quite a bit and uh, quite well, I would say. So they need to get rid of that. Uh, maybe ban out some NAR counters and get ready to pick it for yourself. And uh, yeah, on the other side, uh, 
maybe target the bot lane a little bit because we have seen Styles champion pool is not as big as the one of YIT, so maybe that's the target for them. I'm uh, inclined to see what they will have prepared because they need to do their homework because this won't be as easy as against Secret. <laughs> yeah, although uh, blind faith from the side of Clockwork was enough to manifest perhaps uh, Team Secret into a victory yesterday over the top of servers esports. <laughs> perhaps my blind faith will do the exact same today, as that's uh, something that's really important to think about. And I, I suppose also coming into MSI, um, there is something to speak of that that one of these teams will be representing VCS for the very first time in a very long time at an international event. And especially with the way that groups are set up, I think there's a lot of possibility for success. So I suppose I'll jump this over to Han K as your opinion on which team would you rather see actually represent VCS at the international event? I feel like GAM pretty decently well documented. Other teams might have been looking at. On the opposite side, Saigon, they're fresh, they're new, they have innovative styles like you talked about. Is there uh, is there any hope maybe that Saigon would be the preference for you to go to MSI only because of that fact, or is it just GAM because of the pure talent that they've got? Yeah, I think uh, GAM will be go to the MSI MS will be better because the, the, the players are have already a good mentor to play. They have Levi, they have Kia uh, Yar. Then um, then no one in the in the team of Saigon have experience about that. So in the this in MSI will be mm -hmm. better for Gam to be able to play. I'm scared that uh, Saigon will chalk it when they go international. <laughs> I would also yeah. favor the veteran squad over there because we have to uh, take in one thing into account. With G2 not making MSI, the VCS mm -hmm. representative is getting rid of two free wins for them. <laughs> the reason. I don't think we're in the same group as the LEC this year, though, unfortunately. So we don't even uh, we don't get to I play mean... them until the second round or the double round robin. That's fair. Anyway, uh, we'll, we'll continue on to that. Uh, I'm going to bounce this question quickly off Hank before coming back to you with a different one, Quincy. Um, is it true that Drakthar is actually going to be representing the entirety of the VCS at, at MSI instead? Is that true? I am, of course, the president of the, the Drakthar fan club, so I wanted you to know that my personal feelings will not infringe upon anything here. Yeah, I think uh, this is really hard to say, but uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good enough for me, I suppose, that there's at least some semblance of a fight. As uh, Draft has finally come upon screen here, as we're going to get Saigon Buffalo on the blue side, and Gam is going to be on the red side for game number one, as we had already uh, predicted, gentlemen. Renekton, I, or my apologies, Renekton taken away from the side of Gam, and that Seraphine has already been banned away from the side of Saigon. So expected start, I would say. I, I told you guys they had to ban the Seraphine, but they go a bit of a different approach now because they aren't banning the Nar counters, which is what Saigon Buffalo is doing though, because they are getting rid of Renekton and Camille. So maybe it's a bit of a uh, chicken's game there. Uh, who picks Nar? Is there any counter left up for them? We see on the first pick probably because they take it over, over the, the center as well, which style only showed in the Team Secret series, but he was doing very well on it. I think Saigon will remove the advantage of uh, Gam on the top side when they find the Rinnekong and Camille. So the Senna is the one who has top side a lot and look like Saigon will give the Hazmat more chance to play on the top side. Nice. And, and already uh, kind of pointing to that strategy with Renekton and the Camille taken off the board for Kiaya. A lot of counterplay there. Tristana left up. Nothing shocking about that one coming over. I know Riley can play that one. Um, big difference also in their previous series. Blue side, they, they were experimenting at least towards the end of the split about blue side playing their other mid laner. Uh, and instead, Froggy will be stepping in, which I think is the proper decision, as Froggy had an amazing end to the split and a fantastic first playoff series. So I'm happy to see that one. Uh, so what is left, I suppose, on the top side here that Kiaya could pick for pure lane dominance then? So you see Saigon first pick the uh, Tristana. This is a flag champion that we be able to play in the top or mid door or even the boss side. So it's kind of good pick. Oh, I like that they've uh, blind picked the jungler here because uh, you uh, cannot really get counterpicking that ball as badly as in the top lane, of course. And uh, yeah, Kaiser is a good answer for them as well because they don't know yet if the Tristana is a bot lane or a mid lane Tristana. I would suggest it's more likely to go mid lane by now, but uh, there's always a chance. 
Absolutely. As we're seeing, uh, obviously, the Hecarim was given over to the side of Levi and the response of the Tristana with the likes of the Kai'Sa, rather than going for a double priority on that R1, R2. And then you see the Udyr come back here for the side of BJ. Nothing shocking. One of the more popular champions BJ has been able to play throughout the split. And ensuring that there is no blind Rel to come on the third pick, they go for the Alistar to come out. Thrush has already been taken off the board. Rel was also taken off the board. My apologies, didn't see that from Gam. So now all the really traditional options into Alistar have have been removed. At Galia would be interesting as it's a flex between both Kati uh, and also B in the bottom side of the map. The drafts so far, gentlemen, how are you liking them from both sides? So I think Gal will be more stronger in the bottom side, like uh, the, the Dragon will someone faster in the 5 minute, and then mm -hmm. Hecarim, Kai'Sa, and Galio is stronger in the team fight at the bottom side. So they're just looking for a good champion for Kiaya to be able to TB and fight in the bottom side. It looks like a bit of a different approach from Gamma because they are not really focusing too much onto Kiaya early on. But that, yeah, this might just be them showing their respect to Husband, I would su suggest. Uh, and yeah, they, I really like the Galio flex pick because they really aren't showing their hand yet, but they got their Galio, which is a champion. They want either way, like, it doesn't really matter if Kati or B plays it uh, with, with Galio, they are ready to dive the enemy backline or, yeah do not really care much about enemy turrets or something like this and uh, they are very enemy champion focused SGB more uh, objective focused I would say so it makes sense but they bun the gun now themselves and I don't like it as much <laughs> Making sure to take out a couple of the blind top laners here for Hosmed. So the counter pick could be coming through still from Kiaya, but like you guys said, uh, dumb with at least a, a bottom lane focused strategy. I know at least when I went back and watched SGB versus Gam, there was a good number of laning plays that Taki and Oriety were capable of making. It was more of the late game that had actually come out, where it was the, you know, Oriety's kind of rookie tendencies that began to be punished. So maybe something like that, where they're shutting down the earlier game of that ADC and pulling presence out of topside to make sure that Hosmed cannot just make sure to carry the side of Saigon Buffalo as it is going to be their con picked here over the course of everything else apparent to everything else. So uh, another engaged style almost certainly means the Galio is going into the mid lane waiting to blind that top laner here from Kiaya. What are expectations for the remainder of the draft? I mean, they want they, they want to, to know that uh, where Tristan has to go after they, they pick. So I want to see. Interesting. Mm. It looks like they might actually go for some of the more tanky option for Kiai here, but they have his last pick for him. They already see the age box, so mm -hmm. I don't know if he would uh, be uh, prone to pick Sion into it and just lose the lane gracefully, so to say, yeah. and then uh, just walk the team fights. But they have a very press R comp for now because it's Rakan, Galio, and Hecarim. They just all press R go into the end team, and there might just not be any protection for the Kaiser so far, so I'm a little bit worried about that. Is it being able to get on the back line and dive with the remainder of this team seems to be the strategy. There's a lot of champions who can do that right now. So what top laner are they going to opt for here to make sure that you can get yourselves a draft that fits with that? The Urgot gets taken as the response into Hosmed's Aatrox. What an interesting little grab here. Final thoughts on our last few picks of the draft compositionally. And I also want to hear predictions uh, between both of you and your ability to actually pull both of those things. Hand Okay, I suppose we'll start with you. Uh, who won draft? Who's winning game number one? So I think uh, in this situation, uh, in the boss side of game, we'll be uh, we'll be losing the land, and but they won in the top side. So maybe Levi will go in like uh, farming from blue onto the red, and then uh, re prepare a little bit for Kiya, take the first grab on the top side, and then. Uh, go keep farming until the drag is summoned and then they can fight in the bottom side when the, the drag is gone and uh, Kaisa is stronger in that in that uh, condition but uh, Saigon will um, repair for um, maybe they want to uh, fight in the top side when the grab is summoned but uh, or he can choose to to, uh, to farm in top to bot mm -hmm. and then uh, pushing the land with the uh, Alistair and Tristan now to push very fast and then he, he can able to play when Tristana is outscaled Kaisa. All right, Quincy, prediction for game number one. I'm more convinced by Saigon's draft, so I would suggest that they take this game and then loot the other three. Gotcha. Is that is that shared with you, uh, Hanke? I think, yeah. 
you think I am. All right, split desk yet again here for your desk host. But first, we're going to be stepping into game number one. Every day, Yowei and Mobby on the other side of things waiting to take over. Let's see what they got for us. GLX, BTS, Flash, SVTC, Cerberus, Team Secret. All of these teams have already fallen. Only two more stand. Garm, the preeminent kings of Vietnam, the eternal dominators, a true Goliath. However, on the other side, it is the quintessential David, a team of plucky rookies that no one truly thought much of. Power ranked eighth by the smartest people we could find. They now stand here in the final. Froggy, a fan favorite, is ready to leap into action. Can Garm contain him? Can Levi show that the jungle isn't just Udyr Hecker and Keck W and that it really is a carry role? These two and their teams are ready to rumble. So, for the first time tonight, I welcome my close friends, Yulwe and Mabinogi, to the mic. Thank you very much uh, for that introduction. Here we go. It's finals time and it's action. It's and, uh, to a start already. It is. It's first blood. A riot has gone down. And there it is. The most improved player in the league, according to our community, has struck first. Actually, oh, the actually... number one and number two uh, spots, no. I believe. Start number one and number B three. together. Yeah. B was third. B was third. I think Froggy <laughs> took number two. Froggy took number two. I do want to jump in and just undermine your um your wonderful introduction just a little bit because unfortunately levi is not showing us anything other than udi hacker in this game shut up <laughs> <laughs> what is more exciting is on the top side of the map which is kiai on ergot we haven't seen ergot at all in the vcs it's been a bit of a mainstay in europe but it's been <laughs> we not have seen it here. once <laughs> we haven't seen oh, it at all in the vcs <laughs> 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 and it is yeah it's been busted out by Kiai he's been spamming it quite a lot in, this, in solo queue so I'm excited to see what he can pull off on it he's he was pretty strong on it in previous splits and let's just take a look at this bot side play just oh, Raita to... just walked into that knock up oh that, that is just a really bad play from Raita a little bit of ch stage jitters maybe it's his very first final of course he played his very first best of five in the VCS setting, of course, played some in the promotion tournaments, but uh, never in playoffs before. So, Riety starts off this series with a little bit of a misstep, but SGB overcame those jitters in the first series last week when BMJ started off with uh, getting first blooded in his own jungle. So, it's definitely not over. It's a nice little lead for Gum's uh, bot lane, and you can already see the CS lead growing in Style's favor down there. Very true. It's a, it's a volatile matchup down there, but while they're on the screen, Marby, I want you to talk to us about this top lane because it's an important Ooh. matchup. So these two are have, are our best two top laners of the split so far. Um, well, of the split, it's nearly over. <laughs> um, these two have a pretty storied his have a pretty storied history of just being being successes because. If, if you're an international viewer, you probably recognize the name Xeros from Fongvu Buffalo and later Garm. These two organizations. And these are the two replacements for Xeros on each organization. Hasmed and Kiaya. And throughout Kiaya's time in the top lane, we've been saying he is the best top laner in the league. No, no competition. But he's never won a title. In top lane, he's, he's won in mid, but he's never won in top lane. Hasmed, however, has also never won a title, but he has, last time they met up, completely thrashed Kiara in lane, which is something you rarely ever see, and that is really going to be the big pivot point for SGB because they need this veteran of two years to carry them through and lead the, these really young players to victory. 
Yeah, and last week both of these players actually stepped up to the plate. Both had huge performances, Kiaya Solo King and Coated, and uh, yeah, Coated, I believe, over and over again in Game 3, and the first two games were pretty good as well. And then Hasmid, for his team, he was the main carry, especially in the earliest part of that uh, best of five, where maybe the rookies were still a little bit, uh, a little bit twitchy on the stage, and he stepped up and secured those victories together with Froggy. So I am very, very excited to see this top lane matchup unfold today. First off, we start with a little bit of an early pressure dragon. That's just Gum earning the pressure in bot lane, and then also syncing that with Levi's pathing. So that's a nice early dragon. But that's Gum taking an early dragon. This is already something we haven't seen all split. Their first dragon raid is abysmal. Oh, uh, Carney, that was beautiful. It's, it was very well done. Uh, first dragon is the only stat Garm is bad in, and they do it by design. Does this already uh, smell of some differently prepared strats saved for the final? I think so. I think this Ergod is also part, well, part of that, because the Ergod is a very self-sufficient laner. He's going to basically win the sort of win slash go even by himself in this top lane. And that allows Levi to lean more into this more volatile bot lane and try and get them rolling. But they've already gotten the solo kills, uh, well, 2v2 kills, so they're, they're loving it. Garm's just happy across the map. And I, I'm not sure if we're actually seeing like a planned strategy. For me, these two teams are very interesting because both, of course, those are the two best early game teams but through very different means. SGB, much more of the set play, we've talked so much about them, uh, coming in with a plan, coming in with their uh, bot lane jungle synergy. Gam is much more free-flowing. They look at the map state, and if they see an opportunity, they go there, they are super fast at striking and getting their advantages, but they don't really come in with many plans. They just look at the lane states and say, well, we're winning bot lane this game, so I guess we are just going to take Dragon. Makes a lot of sense to me. This is what we have seen from Gum so many times already. And that's gonna come down to jungle experience. BNJ, it's his rookie split. He's brand new, so he wants to keep things as scripted as possible. Whereas Levi, he's much more experienced at reading the map and going, this is where I'm strong. This is where I should be playing. I can make moves in here. Sometimes he thinks he can make moves where he can't, and that just happens time to time. But he's got himself a dragon so far. He's off to a farm lead. He's having a great time. Farm lead against an Udir, nonetheless. So that's already a very good sign for Gum's scaling options. I know Henke uh, talked about maybe waiting for the Trisana to outscale the Kaiser. I'm not really sure. Uh, I think a Saigon Buffalo definitely has a scaling option here into the late game with Victor and Tristana. But that's pretty far away still. So I'm not sure if we're ever get going to see them just... Oh, this is a big debate though. And a potential fight breaking out. Oh, BJ has already had to flash away. Taki, he's putting on some heroics, but is it going to be enough? It'll be enough to get him out. Froggy is exhausted. He pops the blast code. No retreat now, and no quarter will be given as Hasmed flies forward, but it's BJ that falls first. Froggy fires back, whips the laser across the death laser, living up to its name, and Carty falls to the guns of variety. Oh no, it's a two for one in the in the favor of, of SGB, and it's because Hasmid is able to arrive first, and so is Froggy. It, some heroics from Taki to keep BNJ alive for as long as he can, and it just results in a bit of a gold swing back to SGB. That first blood completely nullified, and it's back to a two, two for two game. This is something we've seen so many times for Saigon Buffalo early bot lane in bot side fights in the jungle and let's see how this all started i think bj gets the smite that's pretty important because he actually gets to live here gets ignited too so, so even though he can't participate in the fight any longer he tanked so many cooldowns so many summoner spells too froggy buys a lot of time and then froggy Hasmid, the uh, dynamic duo of the solo laners they just fight 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 froggy very strong and it's it's a great boon for this champion to get two early kill assists or kill participations because that's 50 to his next evolution. So he should actually be looking at one evolution, even working on the second already, which makes laning against Victor that much harder, especially and for I'm, someone like Galia. Yeah, and it's really well deserved from Froggy because him cancelling uh, Cardi's ultimate actually does a lot for makes sure they win that fight. If that goes off and the AoE knockup comes through, that's could have turned it right back around for Garm, but 
as it is. It's a one victory for SGB and Froggy off to a fantastic start. Despite the lead Levi has, it's not his for CS being nicked. And Uraiti actually got the second kill, which doesn't really do much right now to equalize the gold lead, but certainly helps him out in this disastrous laning phase. He's fallen so far behind, so it's a great sign for him to at least scale into late game. I don't think he uh, this one kill will really turn the tides. This 2v2 matchup, as you can see, they're still struggling into the Kaiser, into the range advantage right now on the other side. But this should bring him into the mid game and give him a little bit more leeway, a little bit more time to scale. And lads, the game is, is uh, so far turning out how we want it. Very close back and forth stuff in these early game teams. And we have another fight erupting as BNJ has been caught out a little bit. Levi popping that ultimate, but there's an excellent gravity field buying so much space, locking that horse up. Froggy whipping damage across. Party pops the Predator, but Husband's here first. BJ, he'll go down. Maybe he finally does, but one for one, and Husband is activated. The wings are spread, and Aatrox is moving forward. The Darkened Blade should be back off cooldown, but no. Wait, what? It's not going to be used as there is a bot lane rumble, but it's in the mid lane. Who knows how that one started, but no one went down. Every yes, we're seven. ready to fight. Yeah, yeah, everyone's just ready to fight. Uh, this... Is actually positioning onto the dragon for SGB. I don't think they're gonna take it, but it lets them clear out the vision. And yeah, it's just Hasmed first of the roam, much like that fight in the red side jungle. It's and what is going on here? It's it's a, all a bit of a thing. It's gone basically saying we can outplay this, we can outplay the two v two. But Froggy is just keeping Garm and Le and Levi in particular just out of range and. I'm not a little sure, and Carter kind of getting a little ahead of himself with that flash, I think. I mean, you can I definitely see it. the- Oh, never mind. What, this is still a replay. Still a replay. Don't <laughs> worry. Still a replay. I got scared. <laughs> okay, uh, right, he actually forced to flash. He saw, saw an opportunity for an all-in there. We just saw the dragon go down as well, so Saigon Buffalo equalizing that one. But yeah, we, we can definitely see the early strength and power of this Udyr that was able to live through all of the er initial burst from Levi and Carty, and bought enough time for Froggy to get his damage down, because right now, yeah, he got a few kills early on, but it's still a scaling mage in the victor, so he is definitely not as strong in the 2v2 skirmishes as someone like the Galio with the early power, so it's good to see them give another kill to Froggy, and Froggy now in a prime position to carry this whole game and bring them up to a 1-0 lead. And lads, I want to check back in with this top lane, because Kiaya has gone to the Urgot. However, He's even in lane, mostly, but Husman has been first to the plays constantly. Yep. Is this counter pick meant to be a lane counter, or are we still waiting for Urgot to be activated? Uh, against Aatrox, I don't think it's necessarily meant to be a lane counter until until at least the Tiamat comes through and he can match the the aggressive shove from Husman. Um that's still a while away. Oh, Style on, going all in. One. Style, though, he's miscounted, but it's the double! Everyone dies. <laughs> and Froggy just takes the minions. <laughs> Froggy uh, he was hoping yeah, for another one. <laughs> Froggy very happy. He got an extra cannon. He wanted cannon and kill oh. though. Froggy, I uh, I want to it check also... in with this. Wait, Carty, what are you doing? It, it stuffs up a little bit because now he's not going to be able to influence get this Rift Tower gold at all. It all goes sure. straight to BJ. Which yeah, isn't... they would have really preferred the kill going over to Froggy here, because uh, or even just an assist, just to get more closer to the next evolution. Yeah, but yeah. this is, this I is the exhaust on AD Carry. Yeah, it looks like Style would be able to win this one, but actually, so much damage coming damage coming out of Variety, even against Exhaust. Just because he uh, used the point blank W, you have to remember that has 95 damage base damage, so. Using that in between auto attacks actually gives you a huge damage boost as well. So very nice execution from Ariety showing us the prowess on this Tristana pick. We were surprised to see Tristana not being prioritized, but or being prioritized this highly maybe for SGB. Gun tried to counter, but so far from all the players we've seen, Tristana kind of deserves the ban. So let's see if Ariety can carry us through this game. There's a board in that little pixel brush there so Levi they need to sweep that out so Levi can continue his aggression but 
I don't think this is going to amount to too much, and now he spotted, so... <laughs> it's yeah, the just going to back away. Board. Look at this pink board. <laughs> They're so scared of the dive, and rightfully so. Gum is so known for the dive, so they've once again synced up bot lane and jungle into the dive position. Wave very nicely prepared to go for the dive, but... SGB, just book it move and it. run into mid lane. <laughs> <laughs> they move to another continent. <laughs> they don't want to deal with that. But this will be first brick for Garm. Uh, they are well ahead of the damage race and have more members running. So a good bit of gold going in. Keeps it dead even. It's shared gold, but this it's going to be traded straight back for this I like this. mid lane tower. And that's a much better win for SGB as it's, you know, it's the mid lane now. Though. It gives and you they much can... more control of the jungle. And they have control on top lane, so they can just uh, move everyone over and maybe even try to get top lane as well. You can see right even jumping the wall to get there more quickly. Right, oh, oh, and the dive! Uh, immediately called, Taki just dives forward straight onto yeah. Kiaia, but B arrives. That ultimate, he's uh -oh. going into the grinder! And now it's a fear onto Husband. He has to flash! But can he actually escape? It looks like for now, he'll be able to. Froggy, it's be tough. careful, son! He manages to back away just in time, but Garm turned the play around. Yeah, they got a little bit ahead of themselves. There was a bit too much collapse from Garm. They saw it was coming, and they were already picking up the Rift Herald. They could have just waited for that to come in and guarantee that top lane tower and walk away, but they wanted more. They wanted Kiaia, but Kiaia's now got his, uh, he's got his Titanic. He can dish out a lot of damage at this point, and it's... It backfires horribly. That's another kill back to Garm. And let's see they're it take to be over. Garm here. <laughs> yeah, they really tried to emulate Garm, but they didn't account for all the movement speed and all the um, the, the just the, the spells that get Garm in place, right? The Gallia Ultimate, the E from Hecarim. They all arrive way more oh! quickly there. What did Stahl just do? Stahl with a little bit of an easy laugh, dying alone in mid lane. Yeah, <sighs> I mean, this is interesting. Style denied SGB any success last split. Is he here to give them some success today? <laughs> That's so rough. <laughs> That's rough. But now this Rift Herald, it's blown open this mid lane turret, and that is just, it means SGB should have full control over the jungle of Gum. They can move between them with ease, and with the spot lane tower going down as well for to the hands of Hasmed eventually. That's. That bot side, uh, bot side jungle, that blue quadrant belongs entirely to SGB. Garm has to be really careful there. Yeah, and one important part about this composition is uh, Froggy and Riotty, after these early shenanigans, are now in really good position to carry this game. Froggy might have trouble to survive Ooh. this one, though. Perfect timing, though. Good stopwatch. Let's Hasmed turn it around, and they actually want to go in forward for this fight. Froggy's very no, strong yeah. at the moment on Kiaia this said. victor. Yeah, Kiaia is in a lot of trouble. He goes down to the laser, and the Frog Champ is only riveting more. Yeah, and I want to reiterate this point, because Froggy on this victor is in an amazing position to carry, because all the enemy champs are really bad into victor. Maybe Hecarim is okay, but uh, if you look at the solo laners, two short-ranged melee, or almost melee solo laners... So we see this catch on style again. Just a lot invested to get him and paid off That's for them. So Very nice, correct forward. move. They're just in the middle of the mid lane, trying to break these towers, but with no turrets to fall back to at What's all. Going on in river. Levi is no. going on to Hearts <laughs> Med. Um, and the bot lane of Garm is just saying hello to the Bean to Bean and Taki. I was so skeptical of Froggy on Victor, he's only played it once, and even though his Orianna is quite good, the strongest Froggy, from players at least, was on Yone last week. So, And Azir looked horrible, right? He played one Control Mage game, Azir, and he basically lost his uh, team the game. So I was very skeptical coming into this draft, but look at Froggy. Five uh, kill contributions, three kills, 400 gold shutdown, hasn't died a single time. Stopwatch now gone, so might be a target. But he's going to move to two items soon. Trying to play Victor without tier. I'm a little bit apprehensive about that because uh, mana could be a problem later on in team fights. They extend for a while. But let's see how he plays it. He wanted to go for Zonius immediately. So he's very safe. He deals a lot of damage, but might struggle in extended fights. If he wants to roll up into a um, Lich Bane third, he can try and go for a more burst style at um, Victor, which 
lines up well with the Ludens, just E into Q, and you've pretty much deleted style off the face of the earth. That may be the way they're going with it. Hasmed and Oriety should be enough to win out extended trade so you can sort of get your ro rotations back, your cooldowns back off and rotate back into burst, but it is a bit unusual looking for this low mana, uh, more more early early game um, priority build through the Ludens. The speed's gone for it. Yep, it's another fight. B's gonna get it started, and BJ has been caught out. The Galio ult is cancelled. Well done by Oridi, but is it gonna be enough as he hops away? There's the trade back onto Levi, and that reset the jump. So now Oridi, he's trying to kite out Cardi. It is gonna be this stopwatch, but Ooh. can Oridi do this? He dodges the fear beyond <laughs> death, but he cannot dodge the chicken. But now it's another winged animal coming on in. It's the Darkened Blade entering the fray up against the Butcher of Zorn. Can he take down Kiara, I think he can pretty damn easily. And B, he has to go to the tower. He won't give over any gold, but he will be going to the death chamber. It's oh, another okay. really good fight for SGB, and this time Gum overextend way too far forward. Immediate start of the Baron. SGB still have two members. There's a lot of lifesteal or uh, ability uh, leech from Hartsmith, so they might even be able to get this one. It's not looking too great right now, let's see, but uh, BJ is coming in, so he should be able to tank this one. What a huge fight in our first game, and I think Saigon Buffalo move firmly into the lead. They are now in prime position to close this one out. Levi has and Gum struggling to find anything. Oh dear. I'm very worried. You know Levi is going to go over this wall. He's going to go for this. There it is, and he steals it away! Levi, you absolute monster! He takes down the big purple worm and he's got his he's back in where his comfort zone killing giant monsters at the end that is where we want Levi. He saves the play for Garm. They have the Baron now. They're only down a thousand gold. They they're down in pressure on the map, but they can absolutely collect claw it back with this buff. What if steel? This keeps them alive. I think if, if they give up Baron with this composition, with all the struggles Gum, Gum's composition has against Froggy, you have to remember in this fight, Froggy wasn't even there. Hasmet and Froggy aren't here at the start of the fight. BJ blows up immediately, and it's still so hard for Gum to secure the kills. They but dive they super deep. They overdive. Yeah. They see blood in the water. They see the health bars on a righty and they're just like we have to get it we have to but Hasmet look comes. at Froggy he's fight. still not here he didn't deal a single bit of damage in this whole fight he, he, and he's the strongest member on the team so Gun kind of knew they had to go for something this was way too deep and they have to thank their MVP they have to thank Levi the best jungler once again to bring them back into the game we're back to even gold and they finally break the mid in mid tower number one but look at the dragon counter we are yeah. looking at a soul in five minutes and that's for sgb not for gum yeah despite the early dragon priority from gum they lose out the pressure on the other on the next three so they haven't even managed to really pick up any towers i think no, they did get grab that mid lane one. And here we're just going to see the steal. There's no vision over the back wall to block out Levi. Oh, sorry, there is one ward, but they don't send anyone. And you can't interrupt the old Taki. It's unstoppable. He just boops over and takes it. I should have tried to maybe throw him a little bit further away. But there's another engage, Levi and Taki. Oh, Gum and they've dived into the back line. The Galio what will not be interrupted this time. And this is a good start for Garm. This is exactly Froggy. what they want. But in comes Husband yeah, and in comes Froggy. Oh, the no. Kench is unbenched. The Tadpole is unrolled. The Frog is unclogged. As he's got the double kill. They're moving on forward. They're going to pick up another two. As Oriety gets them. And that is SGB saying, We might not have Baron, but neither can you. And they learned from their past mistakes. Last time these two teams clashed, Saigon Buffalo came in 30 minutes, first game, and they lost the game to an engage from Levi and from B. And this time around, B actually was on Rakan too. This time around, they are not outdone in the team fights. Perfect positioning for Froggy. He had to flash away, but that's what flash is for. And then it's just Victor front to back. So much damage. Insane setup for Hasmet in the choke as well. They break the first inhibitor, and they are so 
far ahead in an advantageous position for Dragon as well. Mid lane pressure constantly applied. SGB might just win the first game here. And most valuable stopwatch is going to Froggy there. He just dodges out so much of the engage from Garm, but and winds up being able to flash away, as you said, and deal the damage back. Garm are stuck being odd uh, while well, sitting ducks in that in that corridor. And then the AoE damage comes through. It gives it gives the massively to SGB. It gives them that mid lane inhibitor for pressure coming up these next two minutes. And now they, they're in a really good position because they can sort of say to Garm, you have to go for Dragon, and but it's one one Ocean Drake. You can take that. We'll go to Baron. Can certainly look for the objective trade. But I, I'd say Froggy now without Flash, that's something we have to look out for. And would you have ever, in your wildest dreams, if I had asked you two months ago, hey, by the way, I'm from the future. It's going to be game one of the finals. SGV versus Garm. And Froggy is going to be on a control mage and carrying the game. You would have laughed at me. You would have shot me as a heretic. I, I would have tried to rationalize it as Shivana as a control mage. But <laughs> 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 no, look, the frog has been unleashed. They The underfrogs are rising and they are taking it to Garm this game. I don't know what to tell you. This most improved player. No, sorry, Style. It, it, I disagree with the community. It ain't you. It's this. It's this Frogster. I voted Froggy. I think his I growth has Froggy. been absolutely insane. <laughs> he, he last year, yeah, he played some nice um, roaming mages. He had good map movement, shot calling. Yeah, from what we can tell, looked decent. But his lane was abysmal. He was behind the lane 50 CS every single time. We had the running joke. It's not there anymore. Levi can't reach through the dimensions to take away Froggy's farm. Froggy is even in CS. He's 5, 0, and 6. Three items built, and he's ready to carry his team to a 1 0 lead over Garm. It's exciting stuff. Uh, I'm so happy that this is the way the game is going. Uh, in that it's close, it's been back and forth. But in the end, SGB has come out on top. I'm, I really wanted them to win the first game because I was so afraid of Garm just coming in and being Garm. And as hyped as we were for SGB, maybe they could just yeah. run away with it. But I, this this makes it a series. It does. It does. It means of my three predictions that I had going into this, I had my heart, which was a Buffalo win. My head, which said 3-1, 3-2, Garm. And then my gut. I, my gut was saying, it's going to be a stomp. It's going to be a stomp. Screw you, gut. You're wrong. <laughs> I mean, it can still be a stomp. Maybe the other direction. We yeah, actually are true. setting up the map now for this dragon against Baron Trade. And SGB on the wrong side, maybe for, to, to rush the dragon. Like this decision from Garm. Lean topside, but have your ADC. They can also fly in, take the dragon. So let's see if Levi can repeat is magic. Surely not. Surely not twice in one game. As he lurks behind the pit, he's ready to go, oh but it will be Froggy's safe hands that secure the velvet suits for all of SGB. And now, this Baron power play could potentially be the play that breaks the camel's back. Yeah, we're looking for that 50 gold Baron power play. That's what they want. They really want it. They're rushing down this mid lane, and the backs are sort of staggered and not in a great position from Garm. They don't have the best engage to force this fight to happen. That said, their items aren't actually that far down. We don't have the scoreboard up, but it's three for Ooh. both mid lane. It's three for both eighty carries. They're just going to yes, try yeah. and end it here. Levi's down. They're just going to try and take the 4v5. There's the Gallia Walt, but Kiaia's already dead. B jumps in the back line and is deleted from existence by Froggy. Husband chasing Style away. He doesn't have to kill him. He just has to keep him away. Levi has respawned, but the final tower has fallen. The siege begins. The buffalo are stampeding, and there is nothing the Marines can do. The overwhelming firepower was not present the buffaloes are here they are here to play and they are here with a 1-0 lead sub 30 minutes of that they come in and smash gum and it is a game one we have to temper our excitement a little bit it was a little bit of an off draft for gum they haven't played urgot all see uh, all split so maybe it was just a try and maybe they're going to come back and smash but what a start to this final the underfrogs 
with the first game and Froggy, the MVP of that one, Hasmat had an insane performance, Rioty recovered, BJ was there when he was needed, but Froggy, the outstanding one here in this first game, didn't die a single time against all that dive. We look to the veterans, Hasmat and Froggy. We're calling Froggy a veteran now, <laughs> but compared to the rest of his team, I guess he is. And they showed up big. They showed up massive and huge props to the frogs. Buffalo. Pretty hype. <laughs> yep. It's exciting. But with that, we will be going to a short break. I really hope you're enjoying the show. I'm so happy I have both of my close friends here with me. I wouldn't want to do it any other way. I hope you're enjoying the show. If you are, let us know in chat. But we'll be back in a few minutes with the VCS English Analyst Desk. You don't want to miss that. They're smarter than us. See you soon.
The frog has been unclogged, and in the wake of their folly, Gam has been bled. Game one goes to the side of Saigon Buffalo. Welcome back to the BCS Analyst Desk. Rebel Fro Fox alongside Quincy and Hanke. Guys! They, they, the rookies did it! They came out! Game one! Game plan was there! What what happened, Hanke? Tell me, what, what happened? I mean, they prepared very good at the fight in the jungle at ten, 8 minutes. Even that, uh, Ariati do something a uh, little bit fail in the early with the first blood, but uh, Pin J doing very good about his knowledge about damage. The the three members of Gam did not have enough damage to dealing to earlier to kill him quickly. So when Victor arrived and then uh, make the fight more advantage for Saigon, that will be um, very good because uh, Victor, when he face again Galio, he will be losing a little bit in the early because uh, Galio will push in the lane and go first. And he have to go behind. But when the, his teammate wait for him enough when he arrives and then he deal the crowd control and then time it and to the camp members, that will be a really huge advantage for Victor to scale too late. Chrissy, how about yeah. you? What, what, what went on? Uh, not just gonna say I told you so, but I did tell you so that uh, I dislike Gams draft and SGP will take game one. And here we are. But first, let me go into why I dislike Gams draft. They had no real protection for the Kaiser. They had a very dive heavy comp, and the Urgot he doesn't really fit the Gams playstyle, and neither does he fit the rest of the comp basically. And uh, Foggy's Victor didn't really get challenged at all. The other way around, they tilted one for one kills into him. Victor gets his Glowy's evolution second going on, and uh, yeah. I mean, just credit to Husband also, he just popped off. Let's put it like that. I think credit needs to be given to both the veterans, as we put it, because both of them are still pretty young players and very, very talented as Froggy and Hosmet did amazing work within the game. We took all this time praising the young players between like Taki being the number one team support, between BJ being the rookie of the split, even Oriety has had a fantastic split as another rookie as well for the Saigon roster. But when time, when crunch time came, you know, it's Froggy and Hosmet that this team is relying on on the back end. So a lot of respect. I also have to say, surprising, uh, uh, no, not a ton of aggression from Gam to begin. It felt really heavily like Saigon was striking across the map consistently, making sure the iron stayed hot. Were it not for a you know a steal from Levi, this game probably would have gone a lot faster. Uh, what what exactly forced that Critzy? Because it seemed like again Saigon was striking everywhere. Gam felt a bit passive in this first game. Do you think that's you just like testing the waters, or do you think Saigon's game planning really is maybe the counteraction to what Gam has been doing? I mean, hopefully they were just testing the waters because I figured three one. But uh, on a more serious note, uh, I think they did test the waters because uh, Urgot, I mean, is really like a solicit mismatch for Kiaya. He plays Bruises much more usually around. Uh, also, Gams' whole approach to the game was different this time. They picked Puyal test the first Drake over Herald, which they usually don't do, and uh, gave over so much map control for SGB on the top side of the map. And yeah, that's not usually their style. So I would suggest that maybe they just tested the waters and maybe we see a whole different Gam in the next game. Hey, Kay, is this a worrying trend for Gam, or is this just a, a one-off performance you don't expect it to be replicated here? Oh, uh, so, uh, Henke has been frozen in time, unfortunately. So I guess I'll bounce that question over to you, Mr. Crincy. As, uh, what do you think? Worrying trend, or do you believe that there's legitimately some grounds that this could actually be Saigon having cracked the code to beating Gam the way that Flash did only well, you know, one season ago? Uh, I think a bit yes and no. I mean, uh, as we adjust a level on Gam, might have tested the water a little bit, but we got to give credit, but credit is due to SGB. Like, they just played a well rounded game, I would say, and they showed that Hasmet is up to the task to beat Kiaya in a matchup. I mean, he didn't really stomp lane or anything, but he played it well enough. And Froggy in the skirmish has played really cleanly. And while Binjay looked a little bit nervous, he was fine otherwise. Like, they had two major hiccups, I would say, and that was like the. Uh, the Baron steal at Levi should never have gotten there. It was just 50 50 after a really well played fight by SGB. And uh, on another note, the level one that got misplayed, where Style immediately picked up a kill on him, or in that case, it was actually B, which was very fine for SGB. But other way around, yeah, just SGB played a well run game. I don't want to go in too early and say they cracked the code, but they definitely mm -hmm. uh, showed that Gum needs some adaptions. Yes. And Kate. Question back to you. Nice to have you back on the desk because uh, we had a brief interruption there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I asked this question right before. I'll, I'll throw it to you again. 
Um, it, it was it was Gam's game plan, or I suppose was Saigon Buffalo's game plan, just really, really good. Is it something that they can continue? Uh, is this a worrying trend for Gam, or was that a one-off where Gam just felt like they were dipping their toes in the water, uh, and something that they don't you don't expect to continue through multiple games, or something they could easily counteract? Yeah, I think Gam repair for the first attack of them very good about. Eight minutes, uh, invent the red side jungle of Binjay, but uh, just a problem about um, the communicate with style or something because the distance, distance of Kaisa with the rest of the team is not too good, and then he not be able to uh, deal the damage to Binjay and let him alive. And uh, secondly, mm-hmm. is uh, I don't know if the um, Kia fault or the team communication have the problem because I saw a, a lot of ultimate Ugod have failed and go for nothing. Like uh, when Galo chasing uh, Tristana at the second turret in the middle and then you see the got use the ultimate fail and miss the shot. I mean, um, maybe the communicate when the team engage and then uh, Kiaya have missed the shot or something like that. And oh got uh, going not really well in, the, in this team fight. Because the the eight minutes lose the fight and they lose the hero and they lose the control end and lost the advantage versus uh, Ice Dog on the top side and make him really very bad situation to coming back to the game and a lot of uh, things like that make Ice Dog really strong at the front line and Ogot cannot be able to do anything. But at the the Saigon side, there's something they they have to do too because uh, the communication about the, the top tower dive when. Min Jae doing the Herald, second Herald doing that. Uh, like uh, they do stuff, two stuff at the one time. That really not good at the, um, at the, at this time. Because if they want to take the Herald, they just only need to control the top side and then uh, make the vision clear for them. Then take control Herald, then go to um, remove the tower or something from uh, here by Marine, not to take the tower dive and even take the the Herald. That they don't have enough people to doing something like that. And even that, they, they lose that, but they still have the hero, so they keep the advantage slowly, slowly, and then scale the game with the victor, just an eye and ace draw. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I'll bounce to you again for a quick question, because I think this is perhaps a perspective we don't get that often. Let's say you're coaching the side of GAM, which is a team of seasoned veterans here. What can you say to them to make sure that they stay grounded within a game like this? Obviously, they're well-versed in being able to take games to five series and things of that sort. So what do you bring to them after game number one, outside of just talking about tactics and things that they can change? What is it that you say to a team like this when they have all of this experience, having been beaten by the side of Saigon in game number one, to make sure that they stay focused and they come back in game number two. I mean, I would probably remind them of the fact that they did indeed drop a game before to SGB and still took that series to them. Also, yeah, what you just mentioned, that they have played plenty of game fives, uh, game fives also won a couple of them, so there's no worry in that regard. And since they are veterans, maybe I don't even need to tell them that and just focus straight on the tactics, like staying soft, like uh, don't overdive on the second herald, what was uh, just said by Hanke, or... Uh, Play a bit more cleanly, maybe don't pick Urgot. Maybe if you pick Urgot, land good uh, ultimate fears with him. He has a good ultimate for that. I mean, they had these one fights. They could just swing a little bit more in Gums if they play them out a little bit better, like uh, if uh, the first kill goes onto the Urgot and you actually get the fear off instead of just uh, getting one kill and then getting wiped in the reverse. But uh, yeah, I think uh, Gums coach knows how to talk to the team. How about you, Hanke? Obviously, you, you've been able to coach within the VCS. What would you say to somebody like Gamma after a game like this? Yeah, if the, we're doing the, the game like that, and after the game, we just uh, remind something, or maybe the mentor or the communicate to be more clearly, and then focus to the next game about uh, what the uh, Saigon is good at and what they are used to do, and prepare for the next game because we change the side or something like that. I don't know this game, we, they change the side of the, the team or not. They want to change or not because uh, if you change, you change the tactical, change the, the draft or something. Yeah, we talk about the next game more than the last game. Gotcha. Yeah, per- perfect uh, advice for the both of you, being able to make sure that your communication and your spirits stay high in a series like this, especially for grizzled veterans like the side of GAM who have had so much success in the past. You have to expect the players can do some of that, but I love when coaches get involved and they're capable of making that communication as well as it helps make sure everybody stays uh, grounded within a series that could uh, you know very easily get away from themselves. So uh, then let's talk, I guess, a little bit further into top side because that was something that you had talked about uh, before the game, Han K, and what we identified as our matchup game where 
uh, you know, Ganem came out with what should have been an okay matchup into the likes of the Aatrox and into Hosmed with this uh, Urgot, but the Urgot did almost nothing over the course of the game. Certainly didn't put out damage and did not shut out the Aatrox. So is it something that you go to a better counter pick, especially with Gam remaining on this red side? Or uh, is it something that you believe you could technically run back in the right situation? I think Urgot is good big, or even he can play a Jace or something. But uh, it depends on uh, which object the team want to play. Because if you want to play a J, you take the advantage on the top side. But you play, oh god, you want to fight at the bottom side. But they fail the, the, the fight. It, 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 yeah, that it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we're starting into draft in game number two right here. Renekton and Camille still being taken out of the pool of DI to make sure that's not going to come through. Ban's pretty much the same across the board, but Hecram not taken by Levi. Instead, going to ban that away from BJ. Tristana still available for variety coming into game number two. I mean, that's the first start uh, of the draft just with the Hecram as the only change there. And Garm is also on wet side again, which, uh, yeah. Maybe they just uh, show now that Red Side is fine for them, but I haven't seen it so far. And yeah, now that's the first adaption from SGB coming out, especially with the Udia here. So now Garm could pick Tristana for Kati, maybe. But uh, I'm not sure if that's something they don't like so early into the draft. Maybe we just now uh, are a bit uh, getting ready for the Levi special pocket pick, because he has plenty of them. He has the Carters, he has the Gragas. Maybe we see some of those. Yeah, they focus on the Kai'Sa again for a team fight at the early game on the scale to play. Keep continue to pick. Uh, Garagas is someone able to engage the team fight and make sure the Kai'Sa can land on the back side of the, the team and then deal the damage. Important thing to me here, uh, Saigon obviously has Tristana and Alistar readily available here for the side of themselves, and I can't imagine they go to anything else. And the Gragas flex is the most interesting thing to me, because Kiai could definitely play that as a weak side top lane. Levi, of course, plays a bunch of bats. And then you have things like, um, obviously, you could throw that into the support role. You have things yeah. like Set that you could throw into mid lane or support. And the flexibility of Gam has to come out here, because I think in that first game, their, their comp got a little kind of selective in everything that they did. Played a little more meta than we would expect Gam to actually go to as it looks like that uh, hover on that mid laner. Of course, I, I'm, a, I'm a big proponent of set mid lane. I, I've made that very clear in a couple of different social media outlets, and I love Cotty's mid lane set as well, uh, more than just about anybody, but both of them per uh, perfectly serviceable picks into the, like, the Owlstar as well. So, so far, Gam not overplaying their hand. It's just really the Kaiser that you have definitive right now. Yeah, for sure. And this again, like in the first game, that they aren't really showing their hands. They have a very flexible draft. And as you said, yeah, both... Potential support picks are fine into the Alistar, so I'm uh, yeah, inclined to see what they are uh, going there with. Uh, but I would suggest if you have uh, Gwagas and you are Gam, you would usually just put it for Levi because he's just so good on it. Why would you put it on anyone else if you have other picks that are also fine? Maybe they haven't really picked that support yet, despite already showing two potential support picks. That's also an option. Like They could just go uh, for another support, maybe a Leona, maybe a Rakan, but they are not that good into Alistar, so I kind of doubt that. And uh, let's see what they are finishing it off. Because last time, I think they kind of uh, had a fine start point of the draft at this point as well. But then they kind of botched the last rotation. I think this time a big of, of Saigon is more difficult for Gam because I think now they will put the gear here for the last pick again to actually see and so the draft of Saigon complete. And then, yeah, you see, they draft for the support and wait for the key yeah, for the last pick. I think this all because of this dish and I'm that can able to play in the top side. It is. The, the the possibility, at least, of the flexibility of Tristana, perhaps, and I'm wanting to make sure Kiai still has that advantageous matchup. I will say Galio is still available, which is something we haven't seen for a long time here for Saigon, but it is something that Froggy had gone to earlier on in the split if they do want to move around pretty consistently. And then you get the blind top laner, potentially, for Hosmed, and what actually goes to Nar has been the preference pick, but I know Hosmed has plenty of those. I think the Aatrox was amazing last game. I'd almost prefer it over the Nar, to be quite honest, but honestly, uh, I don't think it matters, because he, he gets his... He, absolute click. What are we expecting here as the counter then if Nar is to actually come out right now? Oh, never. It's Aatrox. Mm. What, what's the Aatrox it's counter Aatrox. now? Ah, uh, uh, I was about to say Irelia in case the Nar get, did lock it Matt. in, but uh, yeah. Now they kind of answered it quickly themselves. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think they saw that Nar and Irelia open. They cannot pick Nar because Irelia would just dumpster the Nar there. So mm -hmm. they go for Aatrox versus Nar. A bit of more uh, an even skill matchup, I would say. And let's see if Hasbat can do what he did last game again. 
I think uh, both of them have a lot of fight uh, in this game, and it's it's gonna be huge fight at the early of the game, more objective and the tower or fight in the driver or something. It's more more fight and more fight in over this game. Agreed. Uh, the five on fives, the skirmishes, they look very very set up for both sides. So let's get opinions from both of you. This time I'll start with Princey. Prediction for the game: Who ends up taking this one? Three letters: SGB or Gam? Gam. Yo, I scared that 2-0 for Saigon this game. Alright, another split desk. I am I am obviously cursed at being able to have a split desk as no one's been able to agree over the course of the last two days. But we are going back to Everyday Yulbe and Mobby to cover what should be an absolute bloodbath of a game number two here between Saigon and Gam competing for that spot at MSI and the VCS title here in 2021 spring. G'day everybody, welcome back for game two here on VCS English. It was the Buffalo that drew first blood. David did get that first rock into the eye of Goliath. My name is Everyday, with me once again are my good friends Marvin Ogi and Yulwei. What are your thoughts as we head into this game two? So... If you cast your minds back to a different time, a better time, there was something called the GPL. It is also known as the Gragas Pro League because the Gragas Jungle is a very strong fixture coming out of leagues that were formerly in the GPL. It, you see players like Casa picking up SOFM, Levi, all the VCS junglers, all the PCS junglers, they love this champion. And then the rest of the world's just like, Gragas can jungle? <laughs> they, they seem to have forgotten that. But we're seeing it here now. That's some people will be a, a bit, bit confused, but it's a big staple pick for the VCS. It's sort of that second tier jungler. It's around. It's never going away. Yeah. But for me, looking at these compositions, we are ready to fight. I think as the analyst desk also pointed out already, so many bruises on both teams. Uh, it's insane. Look, look at the top lane, look at the jungle, look at the mid lane even. Everyone is a bruiser now. So there's added attention to the ADCs because those are the two DPS threats on both sides. There isn't really much damage coming from, uh, from other positions. Maybe apart from top lane, I think top lane and AD carry the two most important positions when it comes to damage later on. And we have to see how this plays out. This is something Gam has played so many times that so they are very comfortable. Uh, Carty said, usually banned every single game. So <laughs> we already see him fight for a priority and he easily wins the level one trades against the Galio. He, he, yep. wins, uh, he wins the trades for a long time. I will cut in as uh, a bit of a set main. Uh, yeah, this is a really easy matchup for the set. Um, he should be able to bully forever, which actually kind of negates the weakness of the set pick. Um, normally it's a strong roaming pick, strong enabling pick, but it loses lane. Now it's still those first things, and it wins lane. You know, I want so, to bring uh, back... That's pretty hype. I want to bring back an old narrative for both these mid laners. Froggy is a... Terrible mid laner, who's basically a support in the mid lane. That's what we used to think of him. He's improved a lot. Cardi, back in spring. He's an okay mid laner who likes to roam a lot and is really good on these Galio picks that go and influence the sidelines. He's improved a lot. Now we're just looking at them back at, back in their original forms, and it turns out Cardi is getting the better of them. Gets the first and... blood. Yep. Easy I need, a, thing, I need to stop doing this while I'm talking, because I have to... <laughs> I'm meant to be giving them to you. <laughs> It was a beautiful solo kill though, we saw Froggy overstab very heavily, but now the counter, Froggy with a teleport. Yeah, they're gonna try and go on in, but the Haymaker should be coming back up soon, there it is, it's a big shield, it's a lot of damage. They still need to back off, but there will be no counter kill. It is a clean lead for Garm. It's just a palming off of the wave, and let's see what happens in here. Just a bit, just a bit of a step up, and it just should lead into a Haymaker. 
Or a face breaker, rather. I, I just like, yeah, oh, this, wow. is just yep, this is just a face breaker. Easy. And Froggy doesn't step to the side uh, to dodge the uh, W, the Haymaker damage, uh, the sweet spot, which he could have done. He tried to re-engage under tower to maybe get a little bit of extra tower damage on Carti. That was his biggest um, miss there in the play and actually caused his death. Carti used his flash, so maybe you can attack him. He's a very tanky champion, though, and pretty hard to kill, especially for two tanks in bit and jungle. So. You might be able to exploit him when, once he goes for the dice, which inevitably will happen because it's Carti and it's on set. So <laughs> we are already looking at the bot lane waves and uh, Carti is going to roam down there. But with no flash, his potential on dives is not quite as high. It is worth pointing out that it is the um, fleet footwork. So we're not going to see Sonic the Set Hog coming out with the phase rush. That's a bit more standard, I think, these days. But. Never mind, there seems to be a bit of a scuff on the bot lane, but Taki's just going to walk it out. It's solo lane domination right now across the rift, but no time for that, BJ with another gank. They're going in onto Cardi, he does not have the Haymaker evidently, must have used it to clear the wave, and that will be his downfall as he is taken down now. Wait, oh my word, they're just oh, going to go wait. for the counter kill. They do it excellently, and now B's on the run. Alrighty has already used the jump and does not want to flash. And that is a counter kill for SGB. I think aggress very heavily on does the side of gun, but once B is sort of blown the dismount, they have no way of following up. And the turnaround, the clap back from SGB is just way too much. It, if they completely solo out style, B cannot do anything. And what we're yeah. seeing here, just hey, look, look, down, look, it's an easy look kill. the initial, initial engage, and then it's just a run in from BJ. Right. Yeah, and for the bot, the bot lane play is actually huge now for SGB's map positioning because it gives so much time to BJ. You saw Levi walk to bot lane to fix the wave. He wasn't even able to step up because that's a very scary Tristana. I would have liked to see Ariety hold that W. I think that's a very easy second kill. If you know he has flash, just wait for his flash. He needs to flash. Just auto attack him to death. He can't run away. It's it's very slow champion. And wait, hold your W for another kill. Maybe a minor mechanical mis-execution there from the ADC for SGB for another potential kill. But it's still it is a very good position. They recovered a little bit in the solo lanes when it comes to CS, but still pretty far down. But now the jungle is where I keep my eyes on. Because BNJ in the first game looked a little bit uh, off his game, but now he's ahead in jungle. He got the first kill off and he should be able to influence his lanes. And this farm lead that we see from BNJ isn't necessarily because Levi's been out pathed or anything. It's just the nature of the matchup. Udia is so much faster in the clear than Gragas is, but because of that, Gragas really should be looking to try and make things happen. You still have a flash up, make use of it, try and go for a play. It's a little bit difficult as there's a very, very tanky solo laners and the Tristana is just nigh impossible to get a hold on to as Gragas before six, thanks to that ability to buff the rocket jump. So I like I would have liked to see him pay a bit more attention to to ganks if and just maybe try force flash here and there, low committal ganks, but as it is, still just on the slow farm to six. He's actually picked it up now, so now now you need to do something, Levi, to get yourself back in this game. And now the game has slowed down significantly. No real uh, play being set up by either team. It looks like it, like both teams have a lot of potential, but both teams also have a lot of counter punch. So it's very hard to be the first one uh, to take the initiative because if you overstep, this could cost you the game. So both teams just posturing, looking for op opportunities, looking for openings, and it's mostly down to lane positioning and individual mechanics. We can see Hasmid winning this fight against Kiaya. He spread the wings as the 1v1 kind of peters out. The uh, Aatrox ult ends. The PJ is on the way. He's tagged up, but the hop will get him to safety. There's oh, a fight. Yes. Taki's oh. here. And look at Cardi coming in. He breaks the faces. He takes him for a ride. But it's just the one for one now. But Husband wants to barrel forward. Can't continue it, though. So the one for one is where it'll end. Completely down though, it should be an easy herald pickup for the side of BJ. He can easily uh, easily do it himself. And Kiaya, Kiaya has to flash. Silly mistakes. 
Cardi is going to be up here to catch this wave and make sure there's no shenanigans. But I I feel like SGB could have gotten a lot more there. They weren't. They did not read B coming up. They should have seen him on the wave here. And once you sort of get the one one for one here, Cardi and and Kiara are completely running away. You could just try and turn onto B, and here you are. There's a dead B on the. <laughs> that was perfect. That was so perfect. You just can you can just turn on B. Yeah, indeed you can. Not on this play, but in a different one. And there he goes down. SGB to me just looked like the more coordinated team today. They are once again up four and two in kills. They have an early dragon. They are almost one k gold ahead. And even though the solo laners are struggling in CS. It doesn't matter. Froggy's 30 CS down, but this team knows how to play with no mid laner when it comes to resources. So back to the earlier SGB of last year, but maybe it's enough to kill Garm in this game and get another win. At least this time it's his jungler taking the CS. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> They've rerouted the fifth dimensional tunnel. Uh, <laughs> as Let's have a look at this replay. Ariety hops on forward. It's an easy one. Oh, it's just Beetle trying to save his AD carry, and then but the punish from Froggy comes in. Just fantastic stuff, really. Just setting up and knocking him down. Yeah. Levi is looking so lost on the map. It's uh, rare to see. We have these off performances from Levi. Usually he's just on the aggressive every single time. He's the first one to the play. But sometimes, oh, another one, and there's Teleport Taki. It never yeah. stops as the teleports are coming in. Taki gets it started with a fantastic knockup. Look at all of the damage coming out, but Cardi's here. He's very tanky, but it's BJ that gets it started with the kills. Cardi on the run. They can't 4v3. Oh, they disagree, but the face breaker goes completely wide. It was an, a face whiffer, apparently, and now Taki moving forward gets a knockup. That's a bomb on top of the set, and the kills are going to come in. One for each team. Style. He's in a lot of trouble, though. This resets the jump. But Ariety chickens out. Doesn't want Cardi, or at least not yet, as there's the round. As it's the double kill, Froggy setting it up. Ariety knocks it down. I was say, speaking of chickens, actually, it's, it's still not going time, on. It's Sorry, I'm going to have to come back in as Husband has picked up a solo kill, and SGB are up nine kills to three over Garm. It's complete four, domination. Four, They're winning everywhere. What is going on? What is Gum and what have we done with them? Yesterday we wondered what happened to Cerberus and what happened to Secret in that fight. Yeah, in the bruiser team compositions, when everyone is a bruiser, the stronger champions with more experience with more gold just win. There's nothing to outplay. They just stand on top of each other and just slap each other and SGB has more damage. Gum misplay it so badly at the back half though. Why did they go back in? Why did they posture so aggressively? Three kills for Ariety, and now this game, it should be over. It should be over. That was a that was a delayed ace, basically. Um the only reason you don't get the scorecard is because Levi respawned after dying at the start of the play. We see here, of course, Hasman able to turn around the kill onto Kiaya. The Omni Vamp from this champion is just disgusting. Look <laughs> at that healing. <laughs> There's nothing Kiaya can do. You basically win the fight, but then no, Hasman gets all his health back and that's just gonna be another dragon. If they, if it turns into a mountain rift, there's no hope for Garm with only a um, Kaisa for damage. And it's a mountain rift. <laughs> What is going on? I am this so is incredible. blown away by this performance. And even Hasma just winning against Kiaya straight up in the one one two times in a row, setting up his team, even after struggling early on. Hasma has looked better than Kiaya in this playoffs, I will just say it straight up, even though I'm a huge Kiaya fanboy, as you all know. Man, what what is happening to Gum? Are they playoff chokers as well? They were the favorites. It's not, not only over. today. Not it's not today. over your way. As Cardi moves forward. It is the chem tank set. Uh, I'm very upset to see it. I think Stridebreaker is it's by far the best it. item, but it is how it's going to be. As Kiaya, he's in trouble. They want to go under the tower. The wings are spread. He is taken down. And Husband, the only top laner that has cracked the rock of Kiaya, he does it again and again, and he's mining him for gold. Asmat's just popping off. He's he is wants to take that crown. We had there was an interview on 
Horizon, I believe, where they interviewed Hasmed and they were like, what 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 do you want to be? He said, I still don't think I'm better than Xeros. I still think I have a ways to go. Mate, you're, you're stomping on the best top laner in the league. You are now the best top laner in the league, mate. Xeros, you don't have to be better than him anymore. Don't worry, mate. <laughs> And I'm so happy to see his story come through. Of course, it's still early. We don't want to curse them. We're only 14 minutes in, but we ha have to talk about this incredible team. BJ finally stepping up to the plate and arriving at the final stage. His team has already won a game for him. So now it's on BJ, the rookie of the split, to outdo Levi and give them another one. But Hasmid, we started this cast in... in 2019 summer mostly and Hasmid came in exactly in that split so we have seen the whole story for Hasmid he has been one of our one play we've talked about so much we have criticized Rezo many many times we have talked about his potential about the incredible solo kills he has gotten Kati wants one for himself but now this is the stage where he can crown himself the best top laner and the champion has to be coming back into players after two years and immediately they could be the champions. They certainly could be. And uh, another pl ch player I want to really shout out is BJ. Look at this gap between him and Levi. MVP of the of the split versus rookie of the split. You'd think the MVP is favored. So the two level lead, I did say, I mean, it is a partially the jungle matchup in terms of getting that early experience lead, but those fights in the bot lane, the activity levels of BNJ compared to Levi, no, this is absolutely a start. This is absolutely a smurf from BNJ. He is styling all over Levi, and style getting rid of style. The curse continues, mate. The SGB is like, we we give you this. We give you this token of our of our of our appreciation of you, Gar. We. We really like you. Enjoyed this AD carry. By the way, he's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> but Marby, Marby, you need to understand. You need to understand. Yes, I know. Looking uh, with nameplates off, looking at Udu against Gragas, everyone expects Udu to be ahead, right? It's Udu against Gragas. Yeah. Of course. But this is Levi we are talking about. This is Levi Gragas. He finds minions when there are no minions. He finds kills. He finds experience where there is no experience. This is... A normal Levi, this is human Levi, and we're not supposed to see that, especially when this is his coronation, or supposed to be. He won another MVP, he might lose another split. And I'm thinking, somewhere along the way, somewhere along this week, Levi and DNK swapped, swapped brains. Because DNK <laughs> was super aggressive yesterday, and it was fantastic to see. This is the most passive I've ever seen Levi. And... Like, sometimes Levi has bad games, but that's because he's overforcing too much, he's running it down. This is just Levi wandering around the jungle, taking a look at the graphics and going, Man, someone's ref looks nice today. But, you have to look. He's only just finished his Mythic. There's two items to BNJ. And the only player that's down on the side of SGB is Froggy. And even then, you can say maybe not, because he's had to divert into that... um. Seek his arm guard, and with it, when it, he's just picked up his Shirelius, he's he's fine. He's more than happy to contend with Cardi. Yeah, the Galio going that supportive uh, mythic, not surprising. This is Froggy, but look at Cardi. He's coming out of nowhere. The show gets stopped. He breaks some faces, and they're trying to turn it around, but it just doesn't matter as SGB are able to deal so much damage. It's Kiaia that's the first one to fall, and Style the second. Cardi the third, and the Buffalo are resplendent as they charge forward. It doesn't matter how deep the flank is. They're just winning the fight. And the one position everyone agreed on that SGB had the best of the whole league, uh, looking at the all pro team, Taki. And look at Taki in that fight. What an amazing engage. There was, uh, or counter engage, I should say. There was a four or five man pulverize, absolutely tearing them apart. This is support gap. This is everything gap. And Saigon Buffalo is stomping gum. 18 minutes in, one uh, almost 10k gold advantage. Yeah, I have to say, it. look, it starts off really well, but all men pulverized from Taki just following up with that froggy ultimate means the entire fight is just the entire momentum gained by Gum is gone. It's wiped off the face of the earth. And Taki, he tries to hunt down B, but Taki has been pulling off these 
um, multi-man pulverizers and stopping Garm in their tracks across the entire game. In that bot lane dive, well, turned out to be a dive. He was just smurfing on them. He ended, he's ended up dying twice. Yes, he's a filthy feeder, but he has made up for those kills. This is some fantastic stuff coming out of the Buffalo. It's unbelievable to see it. And I've got to... It's every player, honestly, is playing fantastic in this game. I thought BNJ looked a little bit iffy in game one. I thought he, you know, he was just doing Udia things. Uh, in game two, though, he's looked fantastic. Gapping Levi. He's now 50 CS ahead. Ariety, hard outperforming style. Husband taking uh, Kiaya down. And Taki, I mean, TSM, I know you wanted a, v a Vietnamese support. I'm just saying, Taki's probably cheaper than Palat. <laughs> uh, not <laughs> anymore. Not anymore. Taki is so amazing. <laughs> Alrighty, though, he's caught and he's dead. Oh, he is instantly dead. Uh, Froggy, <laughs> no, that's not the Oh, Froggy, that's not the justice punch he wanted, as Style will be able to claim that kill. It's a shutdown, and SGB uh, getting a little bit too hyphy. Uh-oh. <laughs> We jinxed it, but th this is actually a great play from SGB, just charging oh. the mid lane. It's going to stop the Wait Baron attempt. They um, have to. Um. They can't do it. <laughs> They're just going to immediately... Oh, no. Surely not. We need to see the base. They're just going to go for the end. <laughs> the wings are spread. This is this can't be happening. This cannot be happening. Kiai has Kiyaya's gotten back. It's now 2v1. Yeah, look at Alistair. He's stopping all the backs. No, he can't stop Cardi. It's now a 2v2 in the base. They should be able to hold this off. This should be the Baron secured. They lose one Nexus Tower for it, but it's only one Nexus Tower. I'm half expecting a Pulverize to steal it, but no, it's not going to happen. That is actually... Because they couldn't, couldn't stop the backs, it they is... They haven't killed Husband. Husband is a raid boss. No one Cash kills Husband here. One. Um, and... Now the entirety of SGB is back on the map. Um, it's well, another shutdown. Nice. And oh, is this it? Is this the turnaround? It's back to 5,000 gold lead. Two minutes till Dragon. If they can hold on till then, SGB can pick it up. And then realistically, they just need to try and force more 5v5s because Garn hasn't been winning and they absolutely can't win into a mountain salt. So in my opinion, Saigon Buffalo still should win every single fight. The, these team compositions are very similar, and they only got this opportunity because Ariety overextended very badly. Yeah. Ah, very good play for Carti as well. We know he's an amazing player on the set. Also that really badly timed Froggy ult. That yeah, Froggy help. misplaced the whole situation pretty badly too. And that's two shutdowns over to Style, a third one later on. So Style now got to his second, third item even pretty easily so if he can ever get into the back line maybe isolate or right use this exhaust to get on top of him and out damage him in team fights two items almost three items now for style he is the main carry to look at and even though all the bruises are setting up the kills for this ad carry he needs to deal the damage and style he had a lot of trouble dealing damage last year on this saigon buffalo team they oh, missed players but now it's time for him to deny saigon buffalo the second game and bring gum back into it Revenge for style, it's on the horizon. It would be intense, because uh, your way, I wonder if you can remember a game where style yeah. had a lot of gold on Kaiser. Oh, no. I oh, did! No. Seven and one! <laughs> he was seven and one, but he was playing for SGB at the time, and he was playing the long game to hurt the organization, to hurt the Buffalo. So now, when he's ahead on Kaiser again, can he deal the death blow for game two? We'll have to find out because he has a lot of pressure on his shoulders. More than perhaps he's used to in this split. And it's in a high pressure series. Yeah, we really need to see the rest of Gum sort of stepping up. Um, Kiaya especially. He's looking a lot more like Kemken right now with that 0-3 scoreline. He hasn't been quite as dived as often, but he has not had a good time being solo killed by Hasmed multiple times. The oh, dragon is roaring. Can you hear it already? Everyone is walking down there and S should be in advantageous positioning. You can see Hasmet. He has teleport ready. He has flash ready. He's super strong. He has stopwatch as well. This is Hasmet's time to shine. They Securing this dragon is probably game ending and they are right on it. They need to deny the entry from Levi though. There's if a I lot of flank wards. 
Smite yeah, three, baby. It's just going to be a smite fight. And there it is. Levi, once again, you just know it. As soon as he goes in, he's going to get it. And it's Style. Starting it off oh, with a kill. That's man. one. It's and gone. this is the turn. The Garm magic. The wizardry oh. has happened once again. They have mind controlled SGB into losing unlosable fights. And Garm Ace, they take the dragon. And lads, we've got a game. SGB just completely give up positioning over that dragon. They really didn't need to. They didn't need to play so cowardly. Levi's just able to waltz in, pick up the dragon, and then when Hasmet arrives to salvage the situation, Cardi just presses nope. He just says, nope, get up. Go. We're going over here to have a nice chat. And then and the rest of his team come kill kills Hasmet. It was a very, it was a bad chat. SGB had a really, really good setup uh, looking at this one, but Hasmid really wanted to flank for no reason. He could have just grouped with his teams and maybe even uh, kept B accountable, maybe try to mark B. Because look at Hasmid, he's just trading behind his team. Everyone is already dead. Taki took way too much damage at the start. Right, he's dead. Hasmid is here, but now he can't do anything anymore. This was just very bad team fighting from the side of SGB. It's a 5 for 0, 5k gold ahead. That is unheard of. And now it's back to zero. Behind. It's back to even. With a 500 gold lead for Garm. It's ridiculous. This should not have happened. But all the shutdowns have gone down. Uh, there's a three items on style now. He's now firmly ahead of variety. Everyone's now sort of caught up or ahead, except I guess Levi's still a little bit behind. But it doesn't matter. He's just a Gragas. He just places the barrel and makes sure Hasmed can't kill style. And that's his job done. And the game is not won for Gum either, right? We have seen many yep. good fights now for Gum. They've turned the situation, but because of the amazing early game, it's still a close affair. We still have two very interesting compositions and very similar compositions. But now, SGB need to rethink and need to really sit down, calm down, give Arati time to scale, get him to three items, because he still doesn't have his IE finished. Once that comes in, he has a lot of damage under his belt, and they're still a very good team fighting team most of the time, so I don't think they're completely out of this game. I hope they can recover, but usually this team has actually had nerves of steel, no problem whatsoever last week, after losing that second game in a horrific fashion, so I think they can recover from here. This game should give us some amazing team fights later on. I 100% agree. Uh, this is not over. It It is very tempting to say, oh my word, look at that last team fight. Garm, they're just so far ahead. But they're not, because they were really far behind. It's just a real race now. Yeah, SGB tripped, but Garm was 200 meters behind them. They've just caught up. And now the runners are back on the track. They've got their boots laced up tight, and they're on the geese. And now, style. You're still, he is probably the most important man on the rift right now. Right now, I'm looking towards Taki, see if he can have another one of those smurf performances. I mean, Hasmet, of course, we always have to look to him dealing, see if he can tear up the back line on an Aatrox. It's, it's a known factor. But Cardi looking for these flanks, if he can isolate Hasmet or Ariety, that is exactly what Garm needs to win a team fight. Just I love this from Taki, isolation. though. Not yep. not overly focusing on the engaged. They he's the peel now for his AD carry. They need to keep Ariety alive this time. And Taki just marking all the entrances. Very nice positioning from Taki, denying Kati any semblance of the control here in this team fight. And as you can see, Taki just stands there and Kati can't advance. So Saigon Buffalo play it safe. Ariety very far back. Both teams want to fight. They're itchy. They they want to pull the trigger, but no one wants to lose the game here either, so we yeah, have exactly. to wait. And with Garm has that exposed inhibitor as well, so a team fight loss would be disastrous. And I think the amount of counter engage both these teams have means that whoever engages first is likely to be the one that loses. Is except around this dragon, this is the only place where this is the place where Garm found a good team fight, but that was because Hasmed was completely isolated. And now they need to be a bit more careful. Garm, Hasman's off to the side, but he's found Cardi. This could go badly for SGB. 
Yeah, they're doing a good job marking Cardi, though. He was looking for a very deep flank, but they know really? where he is. But Levi, he gets it started. BJ has to go gold immediately. He has to find a way out of this one as he comes out. He manages it because there's the knockoffs. Fantastic stuff. The froggy ultimate is used. It doesn't really get much done. As a riot, he has gone down. Traded for Levi, though. Style knocked into that Guardian Angel. Taki in the middle of the team giving the disruption. There's the big knockoffs. And now it's Husman. The wings are out. The Aatrox is charging forward. Taki once again. Marking Carty. He follows him that entire fight. Set could do nothing. And SGB come out on top. Who needs an AD carry when you have Ryzo Atro Aatrox? That is his champion. That is the champion he made his debut on. The champion he was known for so many times. Think back to the Neven clip. That was against Hasmet and Lane, and he stomped him so many times. This is an amazing team fight. This is Mountain Soul now. A right he died, but Style died as well. And the next objective on the list is Baron. Not so well for Gun though. They catch out BJ, but here it is. B completely solos out Ariety eventually. There it is. He finds him. They blow him up immediately, but it doesn't matter. Taki and Hasmed working together to just put them in the bounce house, put them on the pain train, and look <laughs> at all this damage coming out from the Aatrox. He blows them up, and it, they don't need Ariety anymore. They've got the AD carry on the top lane. And this is... At such a performance out of Taki. Perhaps upset that he didn't get Rookie of the Split. He was, of course... He did come second, and he was uh, fairly close, if I if I read it correctly. And in the, if, maybe if we'd done the voting after this game, he would have won. Because this Alistar has been absurd. But Garm, they read the play. SGB doesn't know this is happening. I'm this is such ahead. a... This is the EVOS. They need to evacuate afterwards, can they? Get away from this one. This is scary now. SGB doesn't want to let them. The headbutt pulverized lands. The showstopper goes back in. Cardi has full pit grit. Puts up a big shield. And bang! Down goes the AD carry. SGB are pinched in. It's all on Husband. He's getting shredded though. He's trying to heal, but he can't heal enough. It's another ace back to Garm. And it's a left punch, a right punch. Swings roundabout. I don't know who's going to win. <laughs> The Mountain Drag wasn't enough! They picked it up after their fast fight, but the Baron and Snap goes over to Garm and that buff gives them the need to win the fight. The, they pick out Ariety perfectly. They didn't even need the Nar Ultimate. Game. And this is this is game. This is game. Garm win! I said I don't know who wins. <laughs> Maybe he's foolish as Garm is. <laughs> Can you believe this is only 31 minutes in? <laughs> what? It's, it's the unions! <laughs> oh my god. This is uh, one of the most insane comebacks in the single game. And all of these comebacks happened against SGB. They have to be shattered after this early game performance. They looked so amazing and once again fell f uh, fall flat. And now it's 1-1. Gum win this game. They steal the game. And they need to feel great about it. They probably feel good about themselves. Maybe not for the early game. They need to adapt there. Bean J out jungled. Levi. And then top lane was a disaster. Wow. 1-1. One, one. Crazy stuff. I'm sure our analysts have a lot to talk about. And we will be with them in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. We have potentially... Three more games to bring you as it's now one and one in the spring split 2021 finals here on VCS English. See you soon. Rest of the night, return of the screws, it's all in your mind, and it's fighting you on yourself. The storm is coming, wow, kid. What you gonna do now? It's your reflection looking back to pull you down. So are you gonna die today?
Welcome back to the VCS Analyst Desk, where we have seen a game number two, and we are back to a 1-1 in the series. We're down to a best of three here in the VCS Finals. Once again, Rebel Fox with Crincy and Han K. This time, Han K, I'll give you a chance. You predicted in that one that Saigon was going to win. They looked fantastic at the beginning of the series. What happened? Yeah, like I said at the first game, they have the the problem about uh, the communicate at the mid to, mid mid game because you see in the first game they lost the tower die on the top side and this game they leave the ad alone on the top side when area did 
decide to push the second turret and why the support and jungle is control over the jungle and Katie doing good job they he staying on the bus and catch him yeah, you, you see if if they communicate well and then uh, decide to once he push the turret to is control the jungle and then go back to uh, take uh, the advantage at the baron baron bit but they do two stop at the one time again down you see yeah. and well, we saw in this game uh, that's a gum mm -hmm. had they did not had to come back uh, i was gonna say for me personally i was already pepping the notes on how does gum reverse sweep this how will they come back from the zero two but I think most points, despite them winning, are still relevant. Like, Levi looked absolutely lost in that early game. Kiaya did smash lane, but then he kind of didn't, because then he just got solo killed in the 8 all in that Menina is, yeah, very vulnerable too. And, uh, yeah, BJ was all over the map on Udia. I mean, it's kind of hard when you get countered by a jungler that just runs at you and uh, presses the stun button and still does the factor of damage and then uh, just has uh, all the CC and taking this video too. And, uh, yeah. It looked rough for Garm, but then uh, they just got the comeback in. And uh, gotta say, there's one thing I want to highlight there. Carty managed to kill a, a variety in the last fight with a beautiful Haymaker 2 damage cone. And that was basically what decided the fight there because the DPS was just lacking from SGB at that point. That it was. It, it feels like now also, though, two games in a row that Saigon has controlled the majority of the game. And while they did throw in this second game around a couple of fights that were just kind of uh, misappropriated, giving shutdowns over things of that sort, especially the two Baron kicks. But it, it's still been them controlling for the most part, especially with a lot of aggression coming out. Taki's had two fantastic performances in a row uh, around a lot of what's been happening. So my question to both of you, uh, I'll start with Quincy, then go to you, Hanke, afterwards, is how does Gam actually start? to control the earlier stages of the game because you cannot count on you know Saigon throwing every single late game necessarily. I'm not going to say that they won't again, but it, you can't <laughs> count on it. So what does GAM actually do to take control of the series now that they brought it back to a 1-1 within manageable reach? I think with their bot lane uh, just uh, dying 2v2 in the mid game there and uh, really also getting caught in the mid lane for some uh, reason, both uh, style and B had those moments. Uh, they uh, are kind of vulnerable at this point, uh, and despite getting the first early kill in the game one, I think they showed some struggles there. So maybe the Kaiser is not the way to go for them. Maybe they should uh, shift over to something like Zaya, which is a bit more lane aggressive. There, they had uh, well for B there, which is 100% win rate, eight games, eight wins, very uh, good stuff for him there. But maybe Kaiser not the answer for them. And uh, towards Levi, uh, maybe this pocket pick is not the way to go. Maybe you should go for a meta jungler or try the castles out. Yeah, I think uh, the bot side of game will have to decide decide to um, get ban Tristana or pick them because I think that they have problem about dealing with Tristana and Arista on the land. Mm -hmm. um, they they give the advantage to Saigon. Then you can see uh, Binji doing re really good job. Gam cannot do the usual thing of them like uh, doing very well at the landing phase and let Levi decide and. And want to do want to go everywhere he wants and con people around me. But 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 this theory they cannot doing that because the landing phase is broken very early. Like the this game is too to kill in the bottom side and then the game is boom. It just like that. They have to consider like in the bottom side if they want to pick the winning matchup and then doing stuff and give the advantage to uh, to style or Levi and moving around the post side they have to deal with Tristana. Ban him Ban or pick him. Just not let them play, play free play like that. I feel as though now two games in a row, it's been red side for the side of uh, of GAM Esports, and yet they haven't been able to do much with their counter picks. The hardest counter that they've gotten so far has actually been the set into the likes of the Gallia when it comes to their laning phases. So perhaps they should start using some of these counter picks a bit more creatively, or at least uh, using them to secure themselves better laning phases. Uh, at least that that's something to consider because obviously Hosmed has been stomping in that top lane. Froggy, uh, you know, he still had impact even though that mid lane didn't go perfect in game number two and like you said that alistar is a really good pick into the rel despite these very very solid performances on it so far uh so perhaps the draft is a little bit more indicative of what we will see coming into these later stages so now it's a it, it is back to a 1-1 series i'm excited to see what both teams can come to an adaption of if we were to switch sides but we don't know yet quite yet i want to know what saigon would go to in terms of the red uh do you think that blue side is a selection though from the side of game would that give them better priority for their lanes to try to help them start winning to begin with 
I think Saigon will keep the blue sign because I feel them. I feel like they have the confidence about the first big of them and then mm-hmm. take the advantage around and don't care about the blind big of the game like that. Yeah, I agree. I think Saigon has shown in both games that they can absolutely uh, have a dominant early to mid game on the blue side. So why would they change it? I mean, they did just lose this game, but they, they didn't really lose it because of the side selection. You cannot really argue that when Garm has that much of a comeback. What I would uh, adjust is more to in-game stuff that they had, like where they uh, had this really weird objective trade, I would say, where they tried to end and gave Garm the Baron, and that was basically what gave Garm a chance in this game back again. And uh, yeah, maybe just uh, fix the rough edges first and then uh, go into the little details there. Yeah. The Baron control in general has been a bit sloppy this game. Of course, that you are playing into Levi, which makes it a little bit more difficult. But yeah, perhaps slow playing a bit more around some of these massive objectives. I remember uh, specifically around that fourth Mount uh, Drake, and it was the first Mount or the, the the Mountain Soul that was potentially on the board. I watched Ariadne literally just throw auto after auto into the Drake instead of preparing for the fight that was inevitably going to come, or at least forcing Gam potentially to throw damage into the Drake so they could begin their fight. Instead, it was Ariadne just constantly auto attacking, ended up getting caught out. Uh, maybe that communication is something that these rookies have been struggling with at least a little bit as you had uh, kind of ascertained there Hanke uh, that uh, this the Saigon rookies they look like their communication breaks down from time to time especially around these objectives when it comes to do we continue to put damage into Baron into Dragon do we wait for Levi to overplay his hand are we playing for the fight afterwards and I, I think that is perhaps something that needs to improve uh, as we will be getting into the draft here in just a couple of seconds to see what the game plan is I'm sure of it right now as the uh, championship title is going to be on the screen as it turns out it looks like Saigon has actually decided to go to red side I like this because it means that Kane could come out for either mid lane or jungle that's the only reason that i've suggested it as we see the same bands coming out on both sides to begin the draft yeah gam has take away idea of bin j and now let's see how it defeat all the uh, champions And I'm interested to see if they just uh, try to pick the Tristana first on their side now, because it was really detrimental to the domination that uh, Saigon Buffalo showed in these two games. Uh, and uh, yeah, we talked about uh, getting some uh, changes in the water. That's something I also like, the Aatrox ban towards uh, Asmet, because he was really dominating in both games, despite the loss last game. He was absolutely popping off. He solo killed Kiaya even. And I think he might have been even a bigger problem than the victory in game one from Froggy. I agree. Uh, something to at least consider as uh, th- that's something that kadi has been very good at, and uh, they've had the ability. Uh, and then uh, the Nar also is the line that works as well. Um, here, Gam begins off their draft. This is the Hecarim pick. It's not the Tristana. They do give the possibility of Tristana back to the side of Saigon. Feels like Gam has not put a lot of priority on that, so I'm not sure if Kadi cannot flex it, and so it's just guaranteed to be going to style. But it also works really well with the Rel, which is one of V's best champions. So I, I'm very concerned, uh, at least for the side of Gam, why the priority on this Trist, and actually why all of our playoff teams have kind of been hesitant, except for Saigon, who's played it now twice in a row, twice as much as what we saw in the opposite game. As Saigon also goes away from it instead comes to the Jinx Thresh, which was not banned out in the first phase by Gam. Yeah, you, I mean, the uh, Thresh is actually a really good champion for Taki, and now he has a chance to play that he picked it. I think that Geisa will not have a good landing phase when he sh- she play against Thresh and Jinx. But he's still also- forced to play them. Mm-hmm. I also like the fresh blind pick here because uh, B could play well, but he would then play well into fresh, and that matchup is absolutely horrible uh, for well to play. So I like that he, they picked the blind pick fresh there. As like I said, it's a really good pick for Saigon Buffalo so far. What I dislike is the Kaisa as an answer because this time you have the chance to get the Tristana yourself for either mid lane or bot lane. And uh, Jinx needs the fresh to really have any appeal there because the Hacker Wim is a very scary threat for any AD carry on the map. The Tides uh, of Revolution. Go ahead. Yeah, we have Silas now. I mean, mm-hmm. that Froggy prepare for that. I'm pretty sure. Maybe Flag for has a Hamas to play, but the mm-hmm. uh, ultimate of Hecarim and Alistar really good for him to play in the team fight. When he go in, he dive into the team fight and let the space for Jinx to fire and do the damage. 
Absolutely. It, 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 I think it's a very good draft here so far from Saigon. I'm liking what they're doing. Gam is a very aggressive composition, though, so I can at least appreciate maybe that they're willing to go for more of a diving style. Uh, if they're able to get the, you know, Levi inside of some of these landing phases, perhaps the, that's the sauce we've been missing. We're going through the bands. A couple of bands, uh, you know, thrown towards Cotty, like you had, uh, you know, thrown out there, Quincy, potentially, that the set is being removed from the pool, and Jungler is being taken off the uh, the priority list here for Bean J as the possibility. Uh, again, I still think Silas would be awesome. Uh, Froggy has played, and there it is, obviously. Uh, BJ <laughs> willing to take that one into his opposition. I, I prefer to see it on Froggy because I think it's an amazing mid laner, but I do like that Saigon has this in their back pocket and that they prepped this in the final week as a potential flat pick to throw Gam off. What are we seeing on these final couple picks? Yeah, I was about to say like that BJ was a little bit pincered in this draft, but apparently not pincered enough. I mean, he had played Udia, I think, in both games so far. The, the Udia got banned away, the Hecarim got taken away as well. And they also just uh, wound to double ban BJ out, but he's like, ah, it doesn't really matter. I still get my Kane pocket pick, so I'm fine this way. I also like a second buff from the Silas, which I didn't get to talk about earlier. It's a, very good to steal uh, a Hecarim ultimate together with Silas, because his answer of Shadows is even more devastating than the one Hecarim uses. So a lot of AoE damage, good CC from, coming on from him. And I just wonder if Garm is... Uh, quick enough to just uh, run over the game before the Kane gets his form and gets to transform and become a very strong champion in the later stage of the game. Yeah, Kane in this game, I think he will go to the red because uh, it will be a little bit tanky and then can dive into the team fight with Silas and give more space for Jinx, which, which means you can see Akali here and this can focus more on the right and Kai'Sa. Don't let him play the game. And we get Hazmed's Akali. They, they, they talked yeah. about it before that Ryzo was, of course, the Aatrox player. But when I knew him, I knew him as a handful of other champions. And, of course, the Akali was one of the big ones that I saw as the big carry performances. And especially into an auto attack based champion like that Urga in the top lane. That Shroud's going to be so valuable as that champion is now coming out here to assassinate some of the backliners. I'm going to get both of your thoughts on the drafts once again. And I'll ask for your predictions immediately after your analysis. We'll start with Princey because I think last time we went the opposite direction. Yeah, you did. I mean, I, I really dislike the Urgot kind of because it doesn't really fit the Gum style. Akali and OK answer it. Hasmet really needs to smash this game though and enable and buy a bit of time for BJ to have a little bit of a, a strong side there. And uh, the combat speed is squishy. They might just get run over by Hecarim, and Urgot and the uh, Kaiser damage there. So uh, my gut feeling tells me Gum wins this. Yeah, I'm with Saigon Buffalo this time again. Gotcha. All right. Uh, another split desk. Yet again, we're getting this over and over again. It's a worrying trend on my part, as uh, I, I assume we're getting a lot of skirmishing to come out from the side of Saigon, or uh, yeah, from the side of Saigon, as they have a lot of champions who love to do that, as we're going to throw it back to the entirety of the casting crew. That is Everyday, Eel Wei, and Mabinogi, as they're going to take over for what is likely another exciting game here in game number three between Gam and Saigon Buffalo for the VCS Championship. And it's game three. I thought we'd be coming here 2-0, and oh, but no. Garm fought back. They beat the odds, and they bring it here at level pegging. This is now a best of three. Territory our teams are very familiar with. The flex of the cane did go to the jungle this time. No froggy cane. As much fun as that would have been. I'm with Yulwe and Mabinogi. And this is an exciting draft. Yeah, it's, I mean, I saw the first three picks, I saw the jungle bands come out, and it's like, well, you can flex Silas to top lane, just pick the cane, then you have a flex that can go mid and jungle. That's what they did. I'm a genius, all bow before me. But, <laughs> now, realistically, if you've watched any, if you've watched enough SGB, you realize Kane is very much a pick in their wheelhouse. BNJ has gone to it over and over again. This camera thing is kind of cool. We're seeing, we get to see a nice close up of where these jungles are starting. I assume the Vietnamese junglers are talk, uh, casters are talking about this. I'm not. I'm more interested in this Silas and 
looking across at what he has available. He has the Unbreakable Will. He has the Hecarim Ultimate, the Onslaught of Shadows. And these two alone make Silas a fantastic, fabulous pick, even regardless of the fact he is already, a, as a baseline, a pretty strong champion. And for me, this whole game comes down to Gum dominating solo lanes, because both of these solo lane matchups should be advantageous for them. They won first all pro, or got voted first all pro in mid lane, in top lane, in jungle, of course, as well. But their solo lane is so far, especially in top lane, have been outdone by the side of Saigon Buffalo. So now it's their time to show them, yes, we are the better laners. We can play win game, uh, win lane, will win game. And Kati, especially for me, the one to look at here, with the rise into Salis, a very good matchup for the rise. And Kati should be the better player in lane compared to Froggy. He solo killed him last game to start the game off with. So uh, already seeing a lot of pressure coming from Kati, invading topside jungle. And this, for me, is the most important matchup and player in this third game. I'm actually very interested to see the start of the um, blue side for BJ. It, he got the heavy leash from SGB to make to make taking down the solo camps a little bit easier, but he really wants to get onto this top side, punish the pushing Urgot, and at the very least, protect his Akali from the potential threat of Levi. He's going to meet on the Scuttlecrab, but he's actually just heading straight down to the mid lane, and it's already a dead froggy. froggy. Oh no! Froggy's been caught out. He's been taken down by Carti. Yo, way, my man. You caught it. Carti, he's showing up. And because of this path through the mid lane, it is going to be one crab apiece. But these solo lanes already off to a fantastic start. Take it away, Howie. Does he do it? Well, yeah, he no overestimates matter. his own damage and his jungler's positioning. It's just Carti staring him down. EQ, 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 as we all know. Uh, all the yeah, all that is <laughs> coming from the rice, but yeah, Froggy just uses the E aggressively. Thought he had, oh, this is dangerous oh, though. Good engage from B. Haki's That's set. such a disaster. They hit the hook onto Style. They think it's all going well, and now its flash is burned. It's a dead support. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Take it up, boys. I... SGB wins this game. They lost the early game, so here we go. <laughs> Yeah, Levi just in the right place at the right time now. Ooh, Aggressing into BJ. Cardi on Cardi. the flank. Yeah, Cardi's here. BJ has no idea. Oh, and he can't get through the wall. They stop the wall walk, but the lantern's there in time. It's a lot of damage being traded back, but BJ he's will throwing. go down. Froggy comes in from the side, brings the revolution. No, and he's uh -huh. spreading it well. The red wave advances as Froggy looking for another E forward. B trying to hold him up for as long as possible. They wanted Carti. They'll have to settle for a stake. Wait. Oh, they want Taki's more, they want more. Oh, it's a fantastic work from uh, Taki, making yeah. sure the lantern goes forward. He hits the hook over the wall. The prediction is fantastic. Taki will get that kill. But now, Kiaya arrives. Husband is unable to respond. He teleported back to lane. And the shotgun legs sound off. And Froggy goes down. No such thing as just one gank in the early game. We're in the VCS, so we need more kills. Seven kills at five minutes. That's the pace we live for. And both teams actually a very good fight back for SGB after falling to that dive slash invade. So now they actually get back into the game. They get a kill, crucially, to Froggy and to Ariety too. So two of the most important members getting a little bit of gold injected into them. Yeah, and we're gonna take a look. They play around the collapse onto BJ extremely well, but the teleport from Froggy comes in first. Well, actually, I mean, comes in second. Cardi's already here, but he's able to collapse. He's able to return the kill onto Levi, and then it's sort of support heroics here. Both oh, B yes. and Taki doing so much to keep Garm in the like. B's doing his best to get his team out, but Cardi, oh, Taki rather. Look, he he this predicts this. He predicts where Cardi is going to be. He just grabs them and then knocks them down. It's only Kiaya teleporting in that saves the playback. And I oh. believe I visited a top lane and brought down the pass mid. And yep. he even flashed and altered to try and get away. Now those two tools are not available to him for the next gank. That's an easy repeat gank, maybe even a dive with uh, Ricati roaming up to topside. 
So now Hasmet under a lot of pressure. This is one of his most famous champions. We haven't seen it in a while. He is legendary on this champion, probably the best Akali in the league. And now he's already pretty far behind. Two kills to Kiaya. And at this point, the Urgur can just stare at the Akali and say, well, if you want to fight, I'll just press W and you lose. Uh, and that's going to happen every single time. So now Hasmid needs to find a way around the laning phase, try to maybe dive the rise in the mid lane, get a kill there, try to counteract an, an invade from the side of Garm, because in the pure 1v1, he's doomed. B moving forward with that hex flash will get the knock up onto both, but Taki with an excellent flay. He needs to be oh, careful though. He's going to go down. But look at BJ and Froggy. It's two men arriving. BJ hits the W. Froggy's not going to bother. They just want BJ to go forward, try and get this no, done. But no, maybe Froggy no, should have bothered because Style kites it out. B puts on the heroics, and BJ just doesn't have the damage. All righty, that's ultimate from Levi already. Oh dear doesn't even need it. Yeah, he didn't even have the ult ready. That was my misread, but they don't need it. Now, Gum so far ahead. 3k gold lead, 8 minutes in. We thought, okay, a few games are probably going to go with a very heavy snowball to Gum because that's what happens in their games anyway. And right now, SGB is looking back at that last game and really, really punching themselves for not winning that one because this is supposed to happen in a few games. But it's way better if it happens when you're 2-0 up than when it's 1-1 and you threw the last game and now you're 3k gold down at 8 minutes. Yeah, this is absolutely not what we want to see after those first two games. SGB came out swinging, but they've hit the wall. Garm has recovered and now they are saying, wait a minute. We're meant to be winning, and this is how they're doing it. B, he sets up the play, and the early game damage from the Alistar, especially this empowered auto attack, is just so much. But look here, it's I... beautiful. N knocks them, knocks up BJ, kicks Ariety out of the d damage, and then more CC. Just they can't kill style. And I, I think Froggy made a huge mistake in this play. As, oh yeah, uh, we watch Ariety. Uh, but I, I think I think it's doubled down. Uh, with the mistake that Froggy made. On a low, oh, hang on a minute, Husband's dead. He's got, is he marked? Yep, into yep. the grinder. Kiaya doesn't like losing lane. You can beat him once, you can beat him twice, but he won't let you have the hat trick. And this game, this game is getting out of control for Saigon Buffalo. They have losing lanes in every single lane. They try to go for the late game skating teamfight approach with a lot of individual agency, which brought them oh, back froggy, against froggy, Cerberus. Froggy, Froggy, Froggy. Well, and another kill in bot lane. I think we can uh, we can probably look ahead a little bit because now 10 minutes in, 11 to 3 in kills. We had a similar situation last game, not quite as bad. And uh, I have to praise B again because his performance so far in this game has been outstanding. Taki was great last game. Taki had very good moments this game as well. But B really stamping his foot down, saying, I am the best support. I deserve to be up there with the rest of my team. My top side is winning, but I am winning too. And... Well, yeah. it's definitely looking like B is the better one on the Rift, at least in this game. It's hard. It's not really fair to say because Taki has put up some pretty fantastic performances on the Thresh, but oh my god, it's actually just B. Never mind. He sets this up beautifully for style. <laughs> so good. There is the cow to be there. There is no reason, but he just finds them. He finds another kill. There's this man. This this man is making things happen. And Alistair, oh, they're going on to Cardi. The rocket is fired. It misses. But look at the turn damage. That's just style. Absolutely ruining them. Froggy manages to get to the lantern. Taki yeah. <laughs> just about saves him. And Care the for a wayward Kaiser W. <laughs> it's not going to come out. But no. Oh, this is just. It's just fantastic performance coming out from Garm, top to bottom. I have to say this Alistair, though what we've seen from Taki as well, this is going to shoot to the top of the priority in draft. Yeah, it really seems like Alistair is going a long way for both teams. As you just pointed out, it was amazing for Taki. And usually Taki is a really good Thresh player too. And I'm, I'm not really criticizing him. I think he's playing a good game. But the impact the Alistair is having in both oh, of these froggy. games is just so much greater. <laughs> Needs to be very works. careful. Needs to be very careful. Could have got locked up, but he's okay. 
And BNJ is so far behind now, he really needs the transformation. He's behind in jungle clear, even though he's one of the fastest clearing junglers. He doesn't have the transformation. He is going conqueror, so probably looking at a red cane here. And Particularly with the yeah. whip. He's got the whip as well. That's for Gordrinko. Yeah, this is uh, looking like a rough performance from this. Uh, a lot of comfort champions from Saigon Buffalo. They try to go the comfort route with a Hasmid on Akali and BNJ on the off meta cane. It seems to be not good enough, and they have to rethink their approach for the next game. Stronger lanes, I think, are key in this matchup. I think if, we, if we're if we looking to ride this game off, as never mind me, Cardi's oh, going to come the in. Realm War. Yeah, oh, what a play coming in from that rise. Taking him back, Froggy does have that unbreakable will. He should be able to wade out of this fight, but it's still a riot going down. This Jinx unable to scale as they've just been taken out. Well, just be first brick. Oh. But to finish off my point from before, I think you're going to look at SGB and say they get to be back on the blue side. This is the first time Garm has been on blue and they have come ahead in the lead. And I think these blue side drafts are working out better for these teams. Oh, for sure. And I think we have to look at and talk about Ariety too. The two other rookies, Taki and BNJ, have shown us great performances already. Ariety has looked shaky so far, even in the wins and the very dominant second game until, and even in the team fights. then, Ariety with an overstep in top lane that cost them a lot of tempo in the last game. And losing lane constantly to B and Style. So, I am... Um, I have to criticize him. He's a rookie, he deserves a little bit of time to get used to the stage. But it seems like Wright is a little bit of a liability today, and let's hope for him to come back. Maybe in this game, you never know with the VCS, but hopefully for the next two games to follow. Looks like they want to make some moves up towards this top side, but nothing happens. It's just wasted time. Uh, BNJ not spending that time farming, though he has managed to catch up to Levi for now. I believe yes. he's transformed into blue cane, right? Uh, I always struggle to see it on this skin, but I feel like his E looked like blue cane E to me. Uh, I will be yes. able to tell when I see him, but... Um, yeah. It, unfortunately, in spectator client, his map icon doesn't change. Yeah, that's, that's true. Very annoying, but... Well, he's uh, appearing now? No, he... that's that's not transformed. That's base. But, yeah, that, this, is, this is Odyssey cane. It's super easy to see with Odyssey cane. Is soup? He's super far behind, and there's a chance that he kind of got screwed over because he has spent most of his time in scraps with the lever. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Froggy's dead. Uh -oh. He's in a lot of trouble. He's going to try and heal up, but the healing's not there, and it's another kill for the Urgod. Ooh, God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and my word. Like that too. Oh, okay. We can go to yeah. the next game. Come. Just... Let's just wrap it up. <laughs> oh, oh, teleporting oh. in. Yeah, they really gonna... want style. Yeah, they're not going to get him though, and I think Husband's going to be sent out. I think oh, that's uh, that's an open mid. <laughs> <laughs> and this phase <laughs> is so hard to deal with. You you still have to play games. You, you should have been two zero up. You know we have a chance today. You know you can beat them. You know you can be the champions. You definitely can't Hang on, win there this is actually... game. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry. Continue. So uh, how do you approach this one? How do you come back? How do you reset your mental? And uh, think maybe only about the next game, because this one is only going to cause you more and more pain with every single fight coming up. Oh, BJ, where are you? He doesn't have ult, but he will manage to get out, hopefully, unless Levi stops him. Levi perhaps getting a little bit too hyphy as the Fear Beyond Revolution comes in. Puts him against the wall. Manages to get a kill back. This is a couple kills back now for SGB. Perhaps making it interesting. As Ariety deals a lot of damage. The hook onto B. But in comes Kiaya. Look at the damage. Instantly sends him to the grinders. And Froggy has to try and bail out his support. There is no chance. He has to flee to tower now. And Garm. I think Kiaya might be just a little bit too fed. Yeah, it looked very, it looked kind of good for SGB after Kiaia, I'm uh, sorry, not Kiaia, Hardy and Levi sort of ran it down between the two turrets and fed a few over to SGB, but B comes in, he sets up Kiaia and Kiaia knocks them down, and Cardi, he makes up for his blunder earlier and just takes out Froggy yet again. Well, and at the start of the game, I set up this as a win lane, win game, uh, 
kind of game for Garm, with both solo laners needing to show us that they are the superior players. And at least in this game, it's definitely it has definitely come through. I, especially, I'm, I'm looking at Carti, two-time champion 2020, the only defending champion, coming back, finally bringing Levi and Kiaia to your title, hopefully, today. And he is stepping up huge the last two games. His set was amazing in team fights. He got a solo kill. He got another solo kill in this game to start the game off. And he's looking resplendent. He absolutely is. As Garb move over, they pick up this Mountain Drake. Getting themselves a second. Yeah, we're Stacking. gonna see. Have a look. We're gonna see the engage from Kiaia. B just keeps them there, keeps them tempted as Style comes in as well. And it's just getting the instant fear onto the back line. That's two easy pickups for Kiaia. The minion wave helps Froggy out, get out of there, but it's just two kills and a tower over to Kiaia. And this Ergot, he's 6 and 0. Oh. He, he looked pretty, pretty bad in game one, but he's back with a vengeance. Hasmid going to the mage, uh, to the assassin, to the AP top laner, but he was so good on bruises, all players. This is the Hail Mary for Saigon Buffalo. Here we go. Last fight, maybe. Froggy is going to engage it. As you said, it's a Hail Mary and it's not working out. She's not listening. Uh, I don't I don't think the tomb has been opened. Three days has not passed. There's a riot. He will be taken down. Four kills comes in in swift succession. Look. Fair, like, I, I respect that for SGB. Don't play for 20 minutes, just slowly losing. Throw something at the wall. It didn't work. Whatever, you weren't going to win anyway. And Garm are going to push on forward. Are we going to get a sub? Uh, no, no, they're going to back off. Cooldown. The death spawn timers aren't long enough, but they are going to pick up that inhibitor. That may be a little bit early in terms of there's nothing to pressure on the map. So there's a minute and a half where there's just free minions coming in towards Ariety on the Jinx to bring her back into the game. But with this reset, Style should be picking up their second item. And let's see, it's just Froggy starting it off with the ultimate. Where they're coming from both sides, this is usually what Saigon Buffalo excels at, right? The two solo lanes on the flanks, very high agency uh, champions that can delay the fight, buy space for the variety, buy time for B&J to get into position and for Taki to set up the CC. But of course, from this position, it's impossible. 11k gold difference at 19 minutes. This could have been the fastest game of the split, not quite there. Gum stomped Cerberus in a perfect game in 19 minutes and I believe 22 seconds in the last week. So, not yeah, quite there, but yeah, it's looking insanely dominant. And Gum is going to move to match point. They have been at match point last year many, many times. They were 2 1 up in spring, if I remember correctly. And they were 2 and 2 in summer as well. They always fell flat at, at the final hurdle. I can remember Fiddlesticks. I can remember a Shivana dive. So, it's also on Gum to get back into their championship form and actually lock down the title next game. I'm going off the Gragas performance. I don't want to see Levi anywhere near non standard AP junglers in, in finals <laughs> ever again. Uh, not after those ones, but hey, he's got, he's got a game. He's got a game in hand. Maybe he does bring out the fiddlesticks in next game. Uh, Get us game five. BJ has finally transformed, is in that Rast form. Taki saving Husmed there. As had Levi gotten close, I think he would have died almost instantly as this tower is demonstrating. Garm, pretty much unstoppable at this point. SGB, I mean, they've just got to keep throwing themselves at them. Try and make <laughs> something happen <laughs> as they realm warp behind the tower. Wow, caught me off guard. A riot, he immediately dies. Froggy will be following him down. And now the grind begins. <laughs> Husband gets one. It's not going to be the Penta as one is taken away. Levi will get another. And Husband lives. But what kind of life is it? You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't just drop an Astro in under the tower. <laughs> ah, that's illegal! It's not allowed! <laughs> but it is effective, as it will win them game number three. Garm moves to match point. Rakan predicted them to win. Will he be correct again, or will he be going in the pot? Well, we've got to find out in a little bit. What are your final words, my friends? Well, in this game, we saw the Garm we got, got to see sometimes in the spring split. Those are the games where you just go after away as the enemy team and say, well, 
it's a gum effect. We lose those. But let's focus on the other games. Sadly, Saigon Buffalo could have been 2-1. Now they're staring down the match point for gum. And gum just needs one more of these early games and they're champions again. Now it's match point. Buffalo fall down. Buffalo do fall down. And now we will be heading to another break. We've got to catch our breath and get ready for game four. The VCS English Analyst Desk will be with you in a few minutes. Consider clicking on the links in chat to support the stream, and we'll see you in just a little bit.
Welcome back to the VCS Analyst Desk, where we saw a commanding win here on blue side for GAM up against Saigon Buffalo, as they have now taken the series to match point. Welcome back once again, Rebel Fox with Princey and I'm Compton. As uh, we are able to get into this one, you guys can help break this one down at least a little bit, as this was perhaps the most dominant game we've actually had for the entirety of the series thus far. I guess we'll start with you, Princey. Uh, what did GAM do right in this game that really kind of set themselves apart? Uh, I really like what Juve said initially on the cast. They they had with Death Draft, they had to like win lane, win game. And that's just what they did, basically. I mean, we saw the Kati solo in the third minute. Kiaya was abusing the early level strength of the Urgot there. There was no, really no way for uh, Hasmet to really even get farm in this matchup. And uh, with Kane being a weak jungler as well, it didn't really come together for them at all. And uh, with both supports playing really well and B playing just a tiny bit better, it was all over for Saigon Buffalo. Yeah, I think um, the reason that Gam win the the game here a little bit about Saigon fell in the middle, like the the first love, first blood. When you see they they actually did prepare the plan to to fight in the mid to gain and then take the advantage. Be, be, be after that, like uh, Silas will cross in gay to rise and took the his flash or his skill. I'll kill him and then uh, go to boss side control and do something after that. But uh, maybe Froggy have some rush and he he go early early, and he he he, he cannot wait for for Pinj is coming coming cover him and then he just die alone in the mid side mm -hmm. middle and then drive going back. There's nothing else he can do after that. Yeah, we actually get a chance to see exactly what you're talking about within a replay, which I, I, I'll, I'll talk through at least for a moment, because over the course of the split, I've talked so much about how Saigon's strategy is always to move BJ into mid and help break Froggy out to attack these side lanes that are so good. And this is a situation in which Froggy got a little bit antsy, or at least, uh, it was, so there was some miscommunication here where BJ, he tries to get into mid lane to help attack Cotty, and if BJ's here 5, 10 seconds earlier, maybe that play goes completely differently, and all of a sudden, you've got this skirmishing call position where you've got Kane and you've got Silas and you've got Akali where you control the mid jungle with some of the early pressure because of this loss not only does Rise this control mage get early access to lucidity boots but now all of a sudden your Silas is behind your Kane misses out on at least a little bit of the uh, the orbs and things that you could generate potentially from this play and it's a kill that easily could have gone in the opposite direction I, I think it's it was a big difference maker over the course of the entire of what we were expecting to see uh, and it, it had a large impact over the game as a whole as this was perhaps the most volatile composition. And it, it also leads us into another talking point that I'd like to pick both of your brains about, which is that we're now seeing the substitution of RBY in for Froggy. He's the control mage player. We saw them test this up against Gam. In fact, in their one win, it was RBY who was actually playing on the blue side as this control mage player. Specifically, I think Zoe is now on the table as a legitimate pick to see. Do you agree with this decision to put in RBY over Froggy? I think uh, uh, I do not. Yeah, yeah, you should go first. <laughs> okay, I I do not really agree with this decision at all. I think uh, Foggy, while he did uh, show so show some signs of uh, choking in the last game here, I think he was also the reason they even won this first game with the victor. And this uh, control match only player in REI, he makes it a bit more predictable in the draft for Garmin. I think that is something that Garmin can easily tackle on, and I don't think this will throw them off at all. It might just uh, throw. Saga Buffalo completely off because they now need to play with a different mid laner in their potentially last game of the split. Yeah, if uh, RP is coming now, maybe he plays some kind of Oriana, Shindra, and Zoe. Maybe he play Victor again, like the first game of Froggy. But uh, the problem is that when he go and uh, he went and he go in and play, maybe 
they have some something to fix in the team communication or mental when they lose the two game the two mm-hmm. last game and now they put some someone else to go into the the game uh i think they they want more communication and they fix it improve it and try to play and uh, focus more on the younger in the middle side Absolutely. I, I think that's a possibility to think of. I, I think Froggy's performance in game one what a bit of indicative that they could have controlled Mage with him as well with things like the Victor uh, and the Galio was was still really good, I think, even though game two was not exactly the greatest showing, especially until the later stages. But either way, uh, it, it's going to be RBY in one way or another. So now, uh, if they're back on blue side, which is the question mark, and I think if RBY is coming in, it almost certainly is indicative of the fact that they're going to blue side. Do you go for much stronger side lanes to try to attack Attack, uh, you know, and use this control mage as just a, a sieve and try to you know sandbag Kadi out of being able to affect the map, or are you playing something that you know can you can access the map early? That's kind of what the Victor was doing earlier on. Do you expect mid lane to have more or less of an influence now that RBY is in? Uh, it's a bit tough to say because I think uh, that that Kati will be fine either way. Like he he had no problem with the main mid laner, so to say, and I don't think that the control mid player will absolutely punish his picks in lane. Like he could still just go Galio or Set and just affect the side lanes, who have been doing well either way. Especially Kiaya, I would say the bot lane had some struggles uh, in game two, for example. But uh, I don't think the mid lane matters more now that the different mid laner is in. Yeah, I think if Gam have no thing failed in the early of the game, like in, in Lenny phase, when they face again Twist and out something like that, and they will go continue the, the usually, usually thing that they always do, the, like um, control the Lenny phase and then let Levi doing what he job and then go decide to take uh, control the object or fight everywhere he wants. And like that, the uh, game will continue to win the game if the, the Lenny phase not broken again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can say, honestly, my heart will be broken if they sub in RBY and they lose here in the 3-1 up against the side of Gamus. I've been a massive supporter of both Froggy and Saigon Buffalo the entirety of the split. But if this is the right decision, this is the right decision. I'm not going to question Ren as he is an absolutely incredible coach coming into this one. Uh, and if they need that advantage, like you said, if they need to, to, to double back and have this communication within their own team or something needs to change, perhaps this is the decision that needs to be made. And uh, I will commend them if they can come out with a win here. That's all that matters. As we are getting Saigon Buffalo, Buffalo back on the blue side here for the third game in the series, and they're coming right back into this double ban onto top side. A uh, question for both of you as we start into draft, you can start picking apart the picks. Urgot, is it something that Kiai is amazing at? Can it continue to be picked into this top lane matchup, or was that third game more of a, okay, that was an Akali matchup, and they put pressure, and they put more resources into Kiai type thing? I would think that Urgot in general was not the issue there. I think uh, they showed in two games that Aatrox was more than fine to Urgot was even winning the lanes against it. And uh, the Akali was just a pick that kind of didn't work, I would say. So mm-hmm. as long as Aatrox is an option for SGB, they don't need to target the Urgot in any way of the draft. I, I want to let's see what they, 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 they draft uh, this game. Absolutely. The Kai'Sa is now taken off the pool of Gam. It's been their their go-to ADC here for three straight games on the side of Gam, even in their games that they weren't doing well. It has had those performances as well. They've been willing to go back to it again and again, and now willing to give up the Camille in exchange for the Kai'Sa ban, as Gam also going to be able to take the Hecarim off the board. They do not want to see that one anytime soon. Uh, at least not into the hands of BJ, as uh, we are confirmed as well. Absolutely 100%. This will be RBY stepping into the mid lane now for Saigon Buffalo. As we're going to get first pick consideration here, uh, you know, Udyr has been banned away, as is the Hecarim. So we're seeing at least a little bit of a different jungle matchup. Sure, but I would still think they would maybe pick the Tristana first. But oh, I'm getting uh, wronged already there. I mean, I thought with the Ka- Kaiser Bun, Style finally needs to play something else, and Tristana would be- maybe be one of those options. But Olaf is an interesting first choice because all the meta junglers are out. Maybe Levi needs to rely on his wacky stuff. The wacky stuff of Minjay was the cane. This won't be the same for Levi. He might just go to the castles, which he uh, surprisingly does well on into Olaf, which is not a good matchup in general, but he somehow managed to pull it off. So I'm inclined to see what he is to bring to the table there. But I like the early Tristana pickup because Tristana is whether it's win or loss, it was always a strong pick. Yeah, now they have Tristana and Alistar on the side of Gam. 
let's see how he can do it again. The Saigon or Saigon, what they bring out to face again Tristana in the boss side. Ew. Oh, we see the. <laughs> we, we actually see a ton of picks actually flood in here as the, the draft continues where we had Tristana Alistar immediately responded to by Zoe. Again, that's the RBY special. That's the reason they put this champion or this player in the game is for this Zoe pick specifically. And the Zaya as the response to Tristana with, as you said, uh, Crincy, that uh, Karthus into Olaf matchup that isn't particularly good, but this is Levi's uh, Karthus, which is it's, it's built different than every other Karthus in the entire world. Yeah, it certainly is a bit different. And he's currently hovering the Thunder spells of Smite and Ghost. I think he might want to change this one because Smite Flash is a go-to with him. I have seen some Smite Exhaust cartridges, but Levi tends to be the one that just flashes into the Olaf and just kills him. At least that's what happened in the Team Secret series. So, yeah, hope he changes that anyway. There's uh, strong champions and strong lanes for uh, Cycle Buffalo so far, and also very good early game with the Olaf there. But the, the comp doesn't really like uh, look rounded out so far, so I'm... Really interested to see what they will pick for top lane and support because I like Zaya usually with enchanters, but you also need a tank in this team, so they likely will pick the up that one in the top lane. I would say this. Yeah, let's see. Maybe he can play Trash again in the bottom side because still have right there. Uh, Trash will have advantage in the bottom side. They can boost the lane and they can go the bot if uh, Zaya and Trash actually uh, having pick it from Saigon and then. They can take control in the boss side and let Olaf do his job in the boss side and take the jungle control in the board and remove mm -hmm. the advantage of uh, Levi from Katas. At the range that Gam is currently operating at, I feel as though Haas or uh, I feel as though BJ with this Olaf pick that he's been really, really good on for the majority of the split has I think uh, like nine log games in his seven and two or something on this Olaf. So incredible player. And at this lower range where like Karthus has to be on top of you for the E, the Galio, the Tristana, who's at lower range to at least start the game, and then Alistar, the melee champion. There's a lot of reason to believe that BJ could do quite a bit of work as we are seeing the blind Nar making sure that that's going to come in for the side of Hosmet as opposed to anything else. Else, and we're going to see what they round this composition out with. It will likely be uh, that support role to come out. What protection will they give to the Zaya as they round this composition through? Well, I mean, uh, we have suggested the Fresh, but it will actually be the Tom Kench, which is not Enchanter, but at least some uh, protection for the Zaya. So I like this one. And now all the counter picks for now are open for Kiaya, and he has to pick one to smash it. The Yasu is open, which would actually work, but. You have Galia already, so why not just pick Camille here? I could also still see the Irelia for the direct counter, but he actually favors the Urgen and I'm really surprised by it. I think for the Camille or the keep continue to play your card is still good for him. I'd have uh, I'd have loved to see the Yasuo because that's the old timing our counter, but unfortunately Ti is not willing to go that deep into the pool. Instead, just going to go back to the Urgot, which can punish the Nar in the right situation. Although the range battle will be interesting between the two of them. As uh, I'll get your final thoughts on these two teams, as we will, and also uh, double down on your predictions as well between the two of them. Uh, I think I started last time with Princey Sohan. K, how about you? What, what are your thoughts on the draft? Who's going to win this game? Yeah, I think with this draft is. Saigon will have the advantage more than Gam because, the, uh, yeah, I believe them again. Ah, I just stick to my guns. Uh, I said 3-1 Gam, and I have made all the predictions so far, so just going to stick to it this time as well. My feeling says Gam will win it, and they do. Another split desk. Why do I even ask? Just need to ask one person and then I'll be able to split between the two. As we're going to be going back to Everyday, Yolwei and Mobby to be able to take over this game and whether see whether or not Gam is actually going to be able to close this out in a swift 3-1 or if Saigon could bring us to Silver Scrapes in that game number five here in the VCS Spring Finals. Welcome, it is game four, and as other regions have come to an end, the VCS stands triumphant as a region that's still got some fight in it. A little bit of fighting between the top two teams. We don't want stomps, we don't want any of that. We want to go the distance. 
I think right now, everyone in our broadcast and everyone in chat should be a Saigon Buffalo fan. Just for this game. Because I want game five. Don't mind who <laughs> wins after that, but I want game five. Did you see that emote from RBY? I did. Where's Froggy? <laughs> <laughs> you spent the, qu the frog question mark first thing you did. Wow, that's a disrespect to his teammate. I hope they're on good terms. Uh, at least as good as can be as uh, big, big contenders for the mid lane spot for this amazing team. And you have to think back to Gum against SGB, second half. RBY was the one to win the game, oh, not Froggy. Froggy played two oh, games, no. but the two Well. Oh, dear. Well. Oh, dear. Why? Oh, that's, um, that's a bad start. That's a really bad start, because coming into this, I was... I went, as soon as I saw I saw the cast pick, and I was like, okay, it's Levi. I would have preferred Levi. Then I saw Galio locked in. I'm like, you have no 2v2. Cont you can't contest 2v2s in the mid-jungle. It's terrible. You've just fed Levi first blood. You've set your Olaf so far behind. Mid jungle is a okay for Garm right now. They, it's going to be much harder for SGB to actually capitalize on this advantage. And you aren't going to win top and bot lane. Those lanes should naturally favor the side of Garm. As, I think, as I say that. <laughs> just think about how SGB must feel now. They came in to this fourth game with a set plan. Once again, they are the set plan team. They knew, okay, Karthus, we have Olaf first pick. This is the way we want to counter the Karthus. We know his pathing, path and Ooh, they will continue okay. with the invades. Okay, this is a bold play, but the first blood doesn't really matter here, Levi. It's not like he's gone and reset and they want to kill him. He forces the flash. He's well, Biddy he arrives, but Taki's a hero as well. This is a battle of the supporters. Style has been exhausted, has to expend the flash. And SGB, they should be able to evacuate with the blue buff heist complete. Do they yeah. want to, though? RBY fighting with Carti here on the site. Ooh, dealing it's a lot of damage. But how yeah, is Levi still level 2? Well, I mean, he, he didn't get his second buff and he hasn't got his crop. True. Yeah. Okay, they actually see them for a split second there, and then it's already too late. It's Kiaya, Flash, E. There's almost nothing you can do against Flash, uh, E Flash, I should say, uh, from Urgot. There's, it's very quick CC, and it's a super long animation, so you're locked in the CC for a very long time. That's a free kill on BJ, but good recovery. And they set Karthus behind his original CSing plan. No blue buff either means he will be a little bit slower when it comes to clearing the buffs. Yeah, and if they push through this mid lane, mid wave quickly enough, they can contest the second crab as well and really try and set Garm even further behind. Cardi. And that patience from BJ means the taunt is completely wasted from Cardi and they can They're just win forward. this. They, want, they flash forward. They desperately <laughs> want this as Husmed's on the way first, but the Skittles just do so much damage. RBY, he's deep in the enemy team, but he's doing very well. Levi right. gets a smite for some healing, and now it's going to be the one for one, two for one. And it's Kiaya, the big raid boss. They're fighting on a Karthus corpse. RBY, you have to pull some magic right now. He can't do it. And now it's Kiaya versus Husmed, who will come out on top. Pretty easy call with the health totals as Husmed stops the Urgot into the ground. Back to game two shenanigans. Early kills for Gum, but answered by good moves from Saigon Buffalo. They have not given up yet. They Their mental is once again looking really good. After losing game two in a horrible uh, fashion, after being 10k gold ahead, and then game three, they can just get stomped in 20 minutes. They lose the first play in game three. Uh, four, I should say. And now they just come back with a good answer. SGB strike back. And with that, that's there's still lots of camps to pick up. As we're going to just go through this, it's a huge tussle, but RBY is just able to land all the paddle stars. And there's just it's just Hasmeds here first, and he's reigning in unmolested auto attacks so that by the time Kiaya shows up, He's going so tunneling so hard onto the low health RBY that it's still just Hasmed autoing. He's he's just getting a lots of free damage down and he picks up two kills for himself. He's really far ahead now. He's got those plated steel caps for himself. He's more than happy up against Ergot. And there's a, there was of course all of the bot side jungle. I want to point out a minor thing that happened there. RBY picked up Smite and healed with it. Yes. 
Oh, he I smited. Know. He smited the big chicken, got the big smite heal, and it let him stay in the fight long enough to get the last bit of damage. Really fast play out of him. Love to see it. And we saw some very good mechanics from both sides. Uh, the initial skittles from Levi, as he pointed out on the call, were amazing. They actually chunked Bean J to l less than half HP in a matter of seconds. But then also the movement from Hasmet and RBY, that little play to the smite, very nice recovery from Saigon Buffalo. So both teams are firing on all cylinders. All the players are here. They're ready to fight. Three, three at six minutes. And the next fight will not... Be, we, we're not going, be going to wait long for the next fight as Saigon Buffalo bot control into Dragon should be an easy objective. And yeah, I don't think. All... Um, sorry, you go ahead. Okay. I was going to say uh, throughout all this, SGB has just been quietly winning the bot side. They've picked up a 10 CS lead and they've had permanent priority to assist Bean J on the Dragon on the jungle invades, and this has won them so much across this map. It's led to huge victories. But now Gun, now Cardi's been unlocked. He's making his, he's hovering towards the top side. Well, so the game has settled down a little bit again, and Hasmid is the big point of strength for SGB. We have seen dives on Kiaya. Um, think back to the last Urgot game. I think they actually got some very nice dives. Uh, the, the game before that, of course, the, the last Urgot game. game was the Stomp. Yeah. So they can dive Kiai, and I would like to see Green J move up there with his ultimate as soon as that is unlocked and just put him into the tower, give another kill to Hosman and really let him carry the team fights. We'll have to see if they can manage it. And uh, with RBY off to a good start, that's potentially a shot in the arm for the confidence of SGB that the swap is working. We never, you never know what Froggy would be doing in this game, but you want to have that faith that the decision was good and it paid off. Because we have our doubts about the Froggy swap. Yeah, as I said before, last time these two teams played, RBY won the game. Froggy lost both games. Not yeah. really due to Froggy's deficiencies. Last game certainly started with Froggy getting solo killed. Even the game before, game two, he got solo killed by Carti. So the lane matchup has been going Carti's way. That's to be expected. He is the best mid lane in the league. But they need more stability from the mid lane because all the other players are making great moves. We see Hasmid winning his lane again. We see Beam J being active on the map. And even Raiti and Taki have come together to contest bot lane. This one will be a contest for the Herald, though, and Levi's on the objective. He did so much damage to this one. It seemed like SGB is in position to really fight for it. Zaya's far too far away. They don't really get anything out of this. They don't go for the Shelly bargain. It's a big, yeah, it's a big fumble from SGB. Wanting to f commit to the fight in the top side, but way too late on the response. So now Ariety doesn't get anything on the other side of the map. But. Look at the setup around the top side. Hasmet is in oh, no. real danger right now. He, he needs is, to but sack he his has. Bar. Yeah, I was going to say, his nar bar's pretty healthy. And look at all the members from SGV sprinting towards top lane. They the have timing to kill window. him so fast. Can he get Mega? Kill. He can't. Disaster. He didn't, didn't flash the engage. Mm. He was feeling too safe looking at his Manaba. He thought he had it. Everyone came in from SGB and oh, they want to continue the fight. Yeah, very I'm risky sure. stuff. They can't actually catch on though, so it will just be the kill picked up for Garm. Mm, unfortunate there for Husman and oh no, Ariadne oh, and Kiaya having a scrap. Oh. There's the Requiem coming in. Kiaya, he's waiting for that next E. There's the heal. He gets the Q slow. Is he going to go under tower? He's not. Well, that That's a flash that flash trade. Yeah. Actually not that bad for, for a variety. Of course, you never want to be... Uh, forced to flash away, but that's a lot of resources just for one kill invested. And now Carti caught Carti out a little bit a here. a lot of trouble, but he does have a blast cone. He does have a jungler. Will RBY read what's happening and steal Is the blue buff? Flash? Not quite. Didn't go it for is, the aggressive flash. It is the blue buff to Levi instead of Carti, which isn't the worst thing in the world for Garm, but you definitely... Don't no, you don't really need that blue buff on Levi, as the regen from the jungle item is quite pretty is pretty much good enough. Once you have your fully completed mythic, but 
it's a very good pressure. It's good pressure coming out from RBY, putting Cardi in his place, oh, and here's the dive ooh, on the top. Dive. Yeah, here it comes immediately. That Abyssal Voyage coming straight in. Kiai is buying a lot of time, though, and now Cardi arrives with the big Nah. And Cardi might be regretting as Taki tanked that tower the entire time. Froggy was benched, but they just picked the other frog. Now they just have to evacuate as RBY does a great job screening, uses the extra flash, and they're out of there. That was amazing timing for Hasmid. It looked like Hasmid would commit everything at the start, which makes sense. It's something you want to do. Chain the CC, never give the, uh, the opponent an opportunity to move. But instead, he waited patiently for Carti to arrive. And once Carti started his W channel, Hasmid went in, ulted both into the wall. Carti was not a champion anymore. Amazing performance there, CC. Perfectly hold for, for the important part, style. He flashed forward for that. Very bold. You gotta love the uh, the spirit on display from Style, but is not rewarded. Let's have a look at this replay. Yeah, it's just it is very good juggling from the aggro, and there's a last minute nod to knock Cardi into the wall before he can get anything off. Is fantastic. It sets them up beautifully with Taki tanking the maximum amount, and that last fadeaway bubble to stop B trying to keep anyone under tower. That is. It's just the icing on the cake. It's beautiful play from SGB. It was almost flawless, but now a righty. Well timed. That was a perfect feather storm. Oh, he gets, gets away. out of there. Yeah, perfect feather storm. And Levi is still sitting on the Serald. They haven't put it to use in the top lane immediately. And most of the time, you actually want to see it uh, used in the initial Herald swap. Good flash. Flank <sighs> ward. Uh, yeah, flank he, I should say. Kiaya. A bit dangerous as Kiaya is arriving. The Requiem is going to be used, but Kiaya goes incredibly low. He goes down. The Requiem will pick up no kills. And now Husband, it's just a matter if Husband can get out. He cannot. Style with another jump. He's going to go forward. And oh no, it's happening. The disaster strikes. But now Aridi has arrived at the fight. Deals a lot of damage. Should push Garm back. Levi has to be careful. He goes what? down to the tower. What a huge mistake out of the clutch player that is Levi. Leandris has betrayed him! It, he ends up taking True. the tower damage and it, blo and it goes down. It, it betrays him, it goes down, and that means they can't pivot straight onto this dragon because BJ is still around, he's still threatening. There is no health on SGB, so they can't convert, but it's a, it means everyone has to reset before this next fight. Yeah, and Gun needs to remember to check items and levels, because this is a play we've seen so many times with Levi Carthus, but you have to remember this is level 8 Carthus, he doesn't deal any damage. The health bars are barely moving with the ultimate coming down, Requiem didn't do anything, he arrives in the fight but goes down to his own item later on as Marby pointed out, so really not the fight to look for for Gun. they still pick up a few kills here and there. But in the end, with this shutdown, that's huge. That actually turns the entire play around in SGB's favor. And now they have priority on the dragon and will pick up the next one. That's going to bring them on. I need to see what the next Drake is. If it's an Infernal, that means that we're going to see a lot more spice. There we go. It's an Infernal. And we are going to see here. a lot. We are going to see a lot more excitement coming around these dragons as the game progresses. Five minutes, both Dragon and Baron will be up round about the same time. So we will... I'm very interested to see where these teams can get to at that point. Alrighty, just that little bit ahead of style, and that may be enough to tip the turning points with a completed item in their favor. It's very possible. And with it, this is, as we have pointed out again and again and again, these are the two best early game teams in the VCS. No contest. And we have come out of the early game 100 gold apart. So now it becomes, who can actually pilot this? And I know some people are sitting there saying, but every day it's 15 minutes. That's still the early game. Yeah, not in the VCS. Our games end at 22. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as the tower does fall in the bot lane, what do you want to see these teams do as we head further into the game. So this is all about Levi carry for Gum. We've seen it, it was successful last week against Team Secret two games in a row on the Carthus. 
This team is better, though, on the other side. SGB, they know how to play against Carthus, or you would hope so, as a finalist in this league. So the Carthus, they, they funnel a lot of gold into him, and he's going to pose a big threat to all the squishy champions. Even the Na is prone to getting killed by the, the Carthus. But you can also kite around this one, and Flash last year demonstrated how to play against Levi Carthus. So I I think Gum might have overinvested a little bit. We, we're, we're going to see and judge later on the team fights. This is all about Levi, and in finals, Levi, from time to time, he oversteps his boundaries. Hmm. So overall, we picked up a two for two tower trade. There's a lot of depth into the bot side jungle that Gar that Garm can push into, having knocked both those down. But it is a mid lane open on the side of SGB, so lots of jungle control available. But at this stage, it's Garm with the wards on the map on that bot side that have the control of the jungle, the paths towards Dragon. And we just need to see where, what they can do. Because if Garm, if SGP plays it right, there's like two minutes where nothing's going to happen on the map. They can just deny a lot from Garm. One dramatic change that I'm already noticing in this game compared to the past three. The Kaiser was banned, which our analyst desk pointed out, but it has instantly changed the dynamics of this match as Style gets slept, but there's no follow-up, as Ariety is suddenly winning the matchup. He's 20 CS ahead, he has his Mythic, he's on the Zaya. he's probably still weaker than the Tristana right now, but as the game goes on, this Zaya is going to get more and more threatening, and so far it hasn't been Garm solo lanes carrying. Yeah, and think back to game two. What happened in the late game team fights? Ariety died in the first two seconds. So this time they really invested into keeping him safe. He has the strongest self peel of any AD carry in the Zarya ult. And then also on top of that, a Tom Kench to save him. So they really tried to make Ariety survive the initial onslaught for Gam. This might be the code that cracks Gam's approach to team fighting, but they always invest into the enemy AD carry and try to burst him down as soon as possible. It's looking... Uh, they have a lot of AoE damage. I'm not sure if this is going to succeed, but I definitely agree with you. If Zaya gets to three, four items, she can carry this game easily. I'm just worried there's some kind of interaction with Tom Kench and Ergot that I don't know about, where Ergot oh, just no. gets to eat both of them, kind of <laughs> like how Braum happens. <laughs> Braum can just put up his shield and then get executed at full health, so... Thankfully there's not. <laughs> I don't think but that's the thing anymore, right? They changed it's, I, think, I think that's been fixed. still a thing. Yeah. Is it? Really? really? I'm wow. pretty sure it's still a thing. Well, yeah, yeah, thankfully, yeah. thankfully, no Brawms in this game, uh, so we don't have to test it. I don't think there's any crazy Urgot uh, interactions with Tom Kench, other than Urgot being a pretty good pick into Tom Kench, because you just tag him with the ult and just wait for the shield to drop off, and then you eat but him there, afterwards. There is going to be a crazy dragon interaction here, though. Uh, or is there? Because Gum, uh, they're resetting right now. They're trying to get as many items under the belts as possible for this upcoming dragon fight. They might be behind the play, though. Only 10 seconds for the dragon to spawn. And SGB, they could honestly just try to rush this down and get to Soul Point uncontested. Yeah. They reset way too late, but SGB pushing so aggressively that they screwed it. Yeah, RBY had to be was uh, really playing by the skin of his teeth there. Ha There's the Watch Hasmed. charging Galio Hasmed. He wants to get onto Levi. Gets knocked back by Style, but he manages to get in anyway. And it's a big Nar into the wall, but not big enough. And Style now goes forward with B with the Galio on top. There is the Featherstorm already yeah. being used. As is the Requiem. It's a one for one. Ariety has done a lot of damage. The Feathers oh, are set up. <laughs> Style, you madman! You're not playing Malphite. But it's going to be a one-for-one one of the AD carries. And that means that Garm is coming out on top. They are a man ahead. RBY very low, but they want to continue this. RBY wants to justify the substitution. Has another paddle star locked and loaded. Throws it at Kiaya, but can't deal enough damage. This should be Garm stopping the Dragon Snowball. Uh, sure ever... Go ahead, sorry. I'm just, I'm just saying there's still a flash on Binjay. There's a chance, but he can't get it there in time. 
And SGB, Ooh. in the end, they lose the Dragon Contest. Levi had to use absolutely everything in his arsenal to run away from Hasmid. I really like to Hasmid try to just burst down Levi, get him out of the fight, disengage from the Carthus Ulf, and then reapproach. Played slowly, but Levi able to flash over the wall. No one to follow him. And this is how the fight unfolds. And really, there was no need for SGB to aggress this far into the mid lane, but they have the Nar bar ready. That's what get baits them into it, but the Nar whiffs ev completely. He gets a fine wallop, but his team can't follow up, up on it. And it's just that buster shot from Styles saving the day. The Featherstorm almost turned it back around, but it was just Kiaya and Style sort of baiting them in, but the flash from Kiaya, it, it wound it up. It wound up taking it down, and great play out of the side of Garm to counter everything SGB tried. And every day, you just pointed out how the uh, Urgot ult is pretty good into Tom Kench, and we saw it in action there, right? Tom Kench was almost full HP still, if you consider his grey health. That doesn't matter for Urgot ult, so he just uh, flashes forward, executes a right, because the right he was in a position to 1v9 that fight. If, if not for the Urgot fear, I think the right he can play it front to back slowly. Enemy ADC is down, he has more range than anyone else, and they can just Ooh. look. Oh, Ariety in trouble now. Oh, Ariety's in a lot of trouble. Didn't have the Feather Storm to dodge that taunt, but he's doing a good job to try and get out of there. He goes down, Taki's gonna follow, and Garm are beginning to roll the snowball. BJ slows them down with the hammer, but I don't think they can fight this. They don't have any damage up. This should just be barren for Garm. What Disaster. they really... Yeah, what they're looking to do is just build up the Nar bar and threaten that engage potential to slow them off the Baron. Uh, I don't think it's going to be enough, though. And SGB is in the peril of losing the whole series here. BJ needs yep. to steal. He needs to show us his heroics. That's a huge... He has the Ragnarok. They've killed him. That's a disaster. RBY, I don't think he can do anything about this. They're diving onto him. He's going to try and kill Style, but not successfully. It's just Hazmet alive. The Requiem is being sung, and it might be for SGB's playoffs hopes as they're taken down. Ariety and Taki have respawned. The Abyssal Voyage is available, but Baron did not reset. It's secured for Garm, and it looks like they will finally be heading towards a crown. But they've got a long way to go. They have a long way to go, but this is the Baron. They have very strong side lanes. No one can really contest Kiaya. And this is the Baron setup. It was just very good zoning by the rest of the team. They killed off BNJ. They s kept Hasmed out of the fight, not able to make a big impact with his Nah. <laughs> Levi backing all the way off to use the Requiem as you should. And it was a flawless execution from Garm just denying any opportunity SGB had to get back into that. And now they are so close to finally crowning themselves again. It's pretty far, it's pretty long ago. It's summer 2019, where Garm won the finals the last time 3 0. They 6 0 the players, they were so dominant. Kiaya was the mid laner, Leroy was the jungler. Everyone else is exchanged now on this team. They finally want to win again. The last two times they tried, they went to game five and they choked or misexecuted in game five. So now, Gam needs to just play it slowly. Need to uh, need to not think about what's ahead of them. Need to not think about MSI about the title. Just play a normal game. Levi Carthus has gotten them so much success already. Just play it out correctly, and you are the champions. And on the side of SGB, with the substitution of RBY. That's that's one of the veteran voices removed. It is pure rookie from here on out. Only Hasmed with any experience under his belt. And it is just kind of kind of something to watch. These rookies, they put up a strong fight. We had high hopes. They took a pretty convincing game one, and they should have taken game two. But they they collapse onto Cardi. Trying. But the disengage is just too too strong. They cannot chase into the darkness that is that topside jungle and here is the split push 80 carry the double lift special husband has managed to go back should be able to stop this before anything too important is taken out there he is so now it's just sgb considering 
the 4v4, but Kiaya playing Gatekeeper very well, blocking any Paddle Stars. And now the AD carry has arrived, but B is slowed down. There's a Galio ult. BJ is eaten up, trying to get out of here. Alrighty throws the feathers, but the Blade Caller does a whole oh, lot no. of nothing. And this could be it, as the fight is going all Garm's way. They've picked up three. They've picked up four. And it's only the Nara alive. A teleport is used and Garm are looking to end it. They are looking to become the Spring Split champions. VCS has not attended an international event in more than 12 months. And it is looking to be Garm that will be the ones to go to MSI. To go to Iceland, battle the erupting volcano. And try and bring pride. I've gone. I know the game's not ending. I'm. I know. I know. I've screwed it up. All right. I've made a mistake. <laughs> Look, that's all I've right. made a mistake. You don't need to embarrass me. <laughs> At this point, the game really broke wide open. It's an 8k gold lead for Garm. There so far, had they stopped the dragon snowball completely, the only hope. Saigon Buffalo had remaining. Now it's all eyes at Riotty. Can he pull a rabbit out of his head? Can he find a way to carry the team fights after pretty, pretty lackluster performances so far today? He got outperformed by Shine for sure. This game, he has been pretty good. But there's so much to deal with. And look at Levi, three items completed. Looking at level 16 for the next fight. Potential four level lead in the jungle. The MVP of the split finally showing up and winning us another title. Yeah, and we'll look at this engage. It just a Riotty completely zoned out immediately, but the damage is done. They put him into execute range, and it just... There's no AD carry that can put in anything. And all the early game lead that Hasmed got, it doesn't mean anything. He can't make anything happen with his... Nah. He's just not... They're not able to group up properly for these fights, and Gum is punishing them so heavily. And we... It's just hard for SGB to even find a way to fight them. Kiaya with another engage and RBY. Oh no, Watch for that's Hasmed. a huge wall. Yeah, they're, fil they're filtering into a choke. Cardi gets that taunt off, but immediately goes gold. There's a Nara off, but look at Style. On the back line, the feathers are out. If he gets a blade call, it'll be huge. No. But I don't think he gets it as the done, Requiem done, comes done. down. And wow, I really wish I hadn't already used that little speech because uh, I think this time they might have time as they chase forward on to BNJ and RBY. Ka Kiaya will have a little nap, but it's just a power nap as they charge forward. This should be where it ends. SGB put up a noble effort for three rookies to go this far is unbelievable. But it is the kings of Vietnam, the Goliath, they are finally crowned. Once more, the royalty of Vietnam is resplendent and triumphant. It is Garm Esports that are your spring split 2021 champions. And I could not think of a more deserving team and you saw the joy on levi and kiaya embracing they fought so hard two finals back to back last year falling down in game five finally they take their crown and as far as international results in showings are uh concerned gum was always on top what is team flash they don't care <laughs> <laughs> and Gum was the last representative we had. We were very disappointed at 2019 Worlds. They broke their own meta for some reason. Everyone was left wondering why. Why don't you, don't you just play like in the BCS? Let's hope that they are going to show us some of their magic, some of the Karthus. Karthi winning his third split in a row, coming in 2020 and just winning every single split he has attended as a starter. Style finally redeeming himself. What a story for him as well. And you can you could see B there in the last engage that won the game for uh, for the third dragon there. He was so happy finding the engage. I'm so happy to see B shine on the stage and on the rift. Yeah, that's if it. only their hair so was around fun. to see it. <laughs> and that will be it. Garm will be the team going to Iceland. It's been far too long since the VCS was at an international tournament. And I... I'm so happy that it is Garm that we are sending. SGB, I love you, but Garm are just a class act. And I can't wait to see them cave in RNG skulls. We're in the same group. We're going to 2-0 them. You can, you can refer back to me. It's going to happen. No worries. And for the final time tonight, 
I will be bidding you good night. With me, of course, has been Yulwe and Mabinogi. I hope everyone enjoyed the cast, but good night. And we'll be over to the VCS English Analyst Desk. Take it away. Welcome back to the VCS Analyst Desk. What is the final time of the split? Once again, Rebel Fox, Grinty, and Hanke is we got to witness Gam. They're the best team in the league coming in. I think that was obvious for a bunch of people. I had faith that my boys at Saigon and Froggy would be able to clutch it, but unfortunately, that simply was not the case. Uh, Quincy, let's start with you. You guys' predictions, you were both right. You have bested me in this battle of wits. Uh, how does it feel to know that Gam is going to be going to MSI to be the representative? Ah, feels great. I mean, uh, I said it's 3-1. It was 3-1. Predicted every single game, right? Kind of say I told you so. But anyway, <laughs> back from the flexing, actually back to Garm, who are the deserved champions, of course, of the BCS this time. And yeah, where can I start? They picked the Carters. Uh, it was a bit of a comp that was risky because they were winning lanes from the side of SGB. And uh, an Olaf, Pert war up a bit was playing bad news for the Carters. But when he got the early kill, I got a kind of relief that it was maybe smooth sailing for them. But that wasn't the case, really, because Levi was kind of carrying this team alone this time. All lanes were behind by like 500 gold, and he was up 1.5k and two levels onto the Olaf in the mid game. And mm -hmm. it was all up to Levi to uh, the task to carry his team. And, well, he did. Yeah, I feel really bad for Saigon this game. I mean, the, they, they decide to draft a, a team that have a strong, really huge advantage on the landing phase and early game. Like, uh, every lane is pushing and they they, they are able to um, remove the first blue buff or uh, uh, second of uh, Kathos. Then you see they, they push the, the advantage more and more and more and try to snowball the game, but uh, like like I said, Gnar is such some something that's really difficult to play in the team fight in the mm -hmm. in the team. Like you you when you play landing phase, it's really good for you because you're stronger. But if you want to team fight, you want to communicate with the with your with your teammate, you have to control your angry. And the fight the pawn at twelve thirty in the game, the fight at the middle. You see Gnar is roaming, but he's little now. He don't have he doesn't have angry. And then they lose the fight. They they lost the advantage and the the draft. The the team of uh, Saigon have no tanky, not no true tanky, and the front line of them cannot be able to block the engage from from Gam. And then Gam have Galio and the slow from the world of Cathod. They they just go go and go and engage and and like that. You have nothing to do when the the game is lost from there. And Gam take yet another championship within this. It's not to be understated just how dominant that their split was, only having lost, I think, one series the entirety of the time. Uh, Hanke, tell me about this Gam team. Is this a team that we can expect at MSI to do some crazy things? Or are, Obviously, we had the prediction of the TO and RNG up in the group. I think that might be a little bit lofty, not unaccessible. But like, what are the expectations for this Gam team coming in, especially after being so far removed from the international scene? Yeah, and I mean, you you can look at the at this game. You see how Saigon have the advantage at the early game, but Gam decided to swap lane and put the Tristana onto the top side and then put take something back. Like when like <laughs> when you are losing and then you you want to take something back, and Gam is doing that really good. They don't let the game be lost so far away from them. They try to hold the game every time when Saigon try to take some object or something on the map. And Gam try to take something back, like they know what Saigon gonna be doing, and then they will decide to do something back, not try to to let Saigon take everything from from them. And that's that's why I believe that if they go into the MSI or in the, and then if they lose the the, the early game a little bit or maybe uh, more than that, but they will allow to play the game and keep the game alive for them by swap they not do control the object or trading object like that, like this game. Grincy, your thoughts on MSI perspectives here for this GAM team? I mean, uh, usual with BCS style, basically. I mean, the, the, the top three dogs might be a bit tough for them. Maybe with G2 not attending, they have a bit of a more chance. It was a joke I used previously. But uh, <laughs> maybe it's a team like, like the PCS representatives, that's uh, PSG Talon, is contestable range for them. Or maybe even Cloud9, maybe take a game of there. Maybe Fudge underestimates what Kiaya can do in the top lane. Maybe they... <laughs> Didn't, don't do their homework on, on Levi, but uh, I would suppose they will. But anyway, for MSI, 
let's see if they can cause some good upsets there. The major regions have something we want. Go get it for us, Cam. That's absolutely the case. And the famous words of Yule Way Kill are... The PCS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about introspective thoughts, Quincy, as we're now wrapping up the broadcast here for the spring split. Do you have any thoughts on the, 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 the split as a whole? Final thoughts on the a, anything that you want to wrap up here? Uh, I want to touch on a little bit that you tweeted out earlier. I mean, this game two is was one of the biggest what-ifs in the uh, BCS final history, so to say. I mean, what does happen if SGB does not go for this Baron to try to end the game trade? Eh? What if they just close this game out, go up 2-0? Will Gam tilt from that? Will they make changes? Will they question everything they do? And well, we now know they did not. But uh, yeah, it was the usual Gam free one at the end of the day there, yeah? or the usual uh, Gam victory. We've seen plenty of times in the regular splits. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am really curious to see what could have happened there. But anyway, Gam is a worthy representative of the VCS, and this is, I think, where we close it out. Yeah, Han K, what about Summer? Tell us about a uh, what are you looking forward to to Summer being a coach, obviously, of BTS, and having watched these teams come forward. Are you excited about the prospects? What are some of the things that you're looking forward to for the VCS in the Summer split? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of things to fix or improve and try to uh, try to find some resolution and to uh, improve and make for the better reshoot of tennis. Uh, so I think there will be more hard work for us, but uh, yeah, we keep doing the good job, the, the best of uh, I have. Fantastic. Well, uh, I think that's going to wrap up our, our analyst test here for the final finale of the split. I want to give a big thanks to our casters over the course of the entire split every day. You'll weigh Mobby. You guys do some fantastic work. All the desk uh, people, I mean, Quincy, Clockwork, myself, uh, and uh, it all everybody else who's been on because there's been so many guests that have been on so i thank you thanks to all of you guys for for that han k thank you so much for joining us here on the finals i want to give a large shout out to spoods uh spoods of course is is taking a little bit of a, a detour as as his life is going in a different direction so if you guys have a chance definitely make sure to thank spoods on his way out because uh he may not be joining us as much during the course of the next few splits of the vcs so certainly give him a shout out if you like what's happening here on the vcs english broadcast make sure to follow us on social throw donations in anything that you have is going to be really widely appreciated we want to thank you all for having watched the entirety of the vcs split i want you to go support make sure gam feels all the love in the world at msi as we take down all of the top regions and we'll see you again in the summer